Technologies, 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports the United Nations said a total of 12,282 Iraqi civilians were killed and another 23,126 were injured in 2014, the highest incidence of violence in the war-torn country since 2007. The head of the UN political mission in Iraq said the country has been besieged with violence as Islamic State militants continue their offensive against the government. Many of the deaths came in the latter part of the year after the Islamic State's major strike in the country. In December alone, 1,101 Iraqis were killed and 1,868 were wounded. The UN warned that the casualty figures have to be considered as the absolute minimum and expressed hope that peace will come soon, adding, yet again, the Iraqi ordinary citizen continues to suffer from violence and terrorism. 2014 has seen the highest number of casualties since the violence in 2006-2007. This is a very sad state of affairs. In 2013, the United Nations said 7,818 civilians were killed in Iraq. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The Total Losers Corpse contained no traces of drugs or alcohol, and a superstitious Delta Airlines adds busty mermaids to its plane noses. My friend, you look like you are in need of the world's finest internet news summaries. Please come in and warm yourself by the fire of knowledge. This is The Onion Week in Review. A new law passed in Colorado this week will allow residents with a doctor's prescription to purchase medicinal fireworks, saying that those in need of stargazers, firecrackers, and galleria highlights now need only obtain a doctor's prescription, state officials expressed hope that the law would ease the suffering of those in need of huge, dazzling explosions. And in this week's op-ed pages, a man notes that, like it or not, we all die, then get dug up and molested. In other news, white male privilege is squandered on a job at Best Buy, and a local TCBY has missed the past two logo changes. Well, that's it for now. Goodbyes are bittersweet, my love, so I'll only tell you, for more, keep checking TheOnion.com. This is The Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and it is the Live Sunday edition of the program with you in studio tonight. It's me, Ian. And Adamo. Adamo Freeman is here from copblock.org. And, of course, we'll talk to you about whatever is on your mind. You may dial us up toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Also, you can join us via Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. Of course, you can bring up anything you want, but we always bring stuff to the table to talk about. And Ademo, tonight I've got an unusual story that has been sitting in my show prep for a couple of weeks now, and I just haven't had the chance to uh, to really talk to, uh, talk about this. It's you know it's not breaking news or anything like that, but it's very different. The story is from the Daily Mail in the UK, but it's actually. Uh, about a Japanese artist in um, in Japan. Uh, she uh, makes objects like phone cases, kayaks, and picture frames. Sounds reasonable. Shaped like her own vagina. Oh. And she has now been arrested and charged with distributing obscene data. The charges follow Megumi Igarashi's arrest this month after she raised funds online to pay for a genital-shaped kayak which she made on a 3D printer. There you go. Now, you know, these 3D printers are pretty amazing, right? Like hey. you can print out an entire kayak now. Pretty and it's cool. modeled after her, her vagina. vagina. The 42-year-old was first arrested in July, but was freed after several days following a legal appeal and after thousands of people signed a petition demanding her release. The story continues, but uh, Tokyo police arrested her again this month, along with sex shop owner Minori Watanabe, also a writer and feminist activist for, quote, displaying Igarashi's obscene or Igarashi's obscene goods in her shop window, unquote. Okay, so she made, uh, what else did she make besides a kayak? Windows? Well, I'm, it seems like there's a variety of things she's made, but they mentioned phone cases, kayaks, picture frames. There's a, a picture here. Uh, well, I guess this is the kayak. It, it just looks like a sculpture almost, uh, a very, very large well, the kayak I can understand resembling, vagina. yeah, her vagina. But the other things, like I you sit in the hole, sure, yeah. like yeah, from like the bird's eye view, right? 
But uh, some of the other things, it wouldn't be as obvious to me that, I mean, I didn't know, like, I guess I would need the visual of the items she makes, but why are these, you know, they're saying this is lewd, right? So, like, they're, like, basically this offends people, and so you should be stopped. But yeah. how, like, how obvious can it be? I mean, kayak aside, I don't think the kayak even works out that good, but. The kayak, I would say, looks, you know, if you're looking oh, at yeah. it from the top, okay. it, it's very well sculpted. It, it de- definitely resembles a, uh, a Yeah, that's not, that's not a place for your, that's clitoris. not a cup holder right there. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> uh, but it also doesn't look like a very good kayak because there's, well, the kayak normally has a bottom in it, and this doesn't have a bottom. It's very strange. I'll Weird. post the link on our Facebook Google Plus and Twitter, and you can take a look at it when you get a chance. They also show the cell phone cases, which are much more subtle. Uh, when you look at the cell phone case, there's definitely an imprint of something there, but uh, it's it's not as obvious what you're looking at with a cell phone case. And, of course, usually someone's hand's probably going to be on the case, so it's likely not as uh, that's likely not as offensive. But nonetheless, uh, some people were upset, and the store owner, the boutique owner, Ms. Watanabe, uh, her boutique is aimed at women. Was later freed at prosecutor as pros, excuse me after prosecutors failed to persuade a judge to sanction extended questioning. Takishi Sumi, Miss Igarashi's lawyer, said, "We don't agree with the prosecutor's contention at all. We'll continue pleading not guilty on behalf of Igarashi, who argues her works are not anything obscene." The Japanese court approved her detention, as prosecutors said they feared she would destroy evidence if released, according to Sumi. The present charges relate to three counts of distributing so-called obscene data, namely CD-ROMs containing computer code for a 3D printer file that would allow users to make copies of the vagina-shaped kayak. Oh, so it's not even the kayak that she's being charged with. It's the program that which can make more on the 3D printer. Distributing obscene data, which isn't an unfamiliar charge. There have been pornographers here in the United States who have been brought up on obscenity charges. So don't think for a moment here that this can't... Oh, well, it's Japan. It can't happen here. Well, yeah, it can, and it has happened here uh, in the U.S. People have gone to prison. Uh, Pornography producers have gone to prison for making porn that is on the, let's say, the rough side, uh, the kind of the sick side, I guess. They've gone after the more oddball pornography. That way, the whole... And charged with, like, assault or something? No, uh, charged with distributing obscenity. Essentially the same the same charge as this lady is facing in Japan. I guess I'm wondering how you feel about this. Is this something that you support? Do you think that uh, this lady should be facing jail time? Should she be facing a punishment for making things out of her vagina? You know, taking some sort of a sculpture... I don't know how she scans... Forget about that. I mean, this is if it's about the data, right? She's going to be charged with, like, possessing code. That's right. Zeros, ones, or whatever method this program is using to decipher its process. Code that, Code. When, when put into a 3D printer, will print out a vagina right. kayak. And so anyone who, like, if, if someone wants to call in and say they, they think this code is bad... Well, hopefully they don't ever want anything printed off a 3D printer because, like, maybe it's the, your code next. Well, look, you know, so there's the one side of it, which is about the code uh, being sort of the issue here, but also the woman with the goods in her shop window. What's really wrong with that anyway? I mean, we're not talking about anything more than a sculpture here. Why would that be offensive but, like, the Statue of David, which is a full frontal nudity on a male— why would that be considered something that is, you know, valuable and desirable? Well, hearing the story, it sounds like, you know, tactics that I'm sure you've realized, too, that, like, you know, the police can't get the Robin Hooders for putting the quarters in the meter, so mm-hmm. they go with something else. And so I wonder if, like, maybe there's a previous history with this shop owner or something like that where, like, hey, items in the window isn't a very, you know, appeasing case for the city to take. Uh, on a shop owner, and so like this data thing is what they they drum up because it seems that ridiculous. Like, I, I I was figuring this was about the actual items being displayed because they look like a female body part. Well, now this is an interesting detail here from the Daily Mail, and I didn't think about this. Japanese or Japan's multi-billion-dollar pornography industry is large and varied, but obscenity laws still ban pictures of actual genitalia, which normally appear pixelated or behind black spots. And I do recall now having seen some pornography, presumably from Japan, where they pixelate out the actual genitals. Hmm. So you can show people having sex, you can show that on a screen, but you can't actually show the man's penis or the woman's vagina. 
and that's I guess part of the reason why this has so this is uh, you're, you're uh, too too many megapixels and no uh, blurring. Um, it sounds totally authoritarian. Yeah, it sounds horrible. just just in line with uh, what I'd expect from uh, you know. She is, by the way, looking at up to two years in jail and a fine of as much as uh, 2.5 million yen, which breaks down to 13,000 pounds. I don't know what that is in U.S. You have to do the conversion. But according to the Daily Mail, uh, that is basically the story here. And she's now facing prison as a result of this uh, for making sculptures. And I'm, I'm wondering, you know, how, how many people in the United States would support this? I know there are people out there who would support her arrest and her prosecution. I just wonder if any of them are listening to the show tonight. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Would you be offended if you, let's say you went downtown and there was a sculpture of a woman's vagina writ large? We're talking about, you know, the hole in this sculpture she's able to put her whole body through, right? So this is a fairly large sculpture. Um, would that be offensive to you? The yeah. toll-free number is 850. I know it wouldn't be offensive to me, but I mean, I, I can't imagine... Uh... I bet you somebody could call in and, and say it might be offensive to them. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can bring up anything you want. We've got Raymond. He's on the line in New Jersey. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Raymond. Hey, Ian. How you doing? Good. You're on with Ian and Ademo on Free Talk Live. Go ahead, sir. Um, it's my first time calling. Welcome. Um, I have to agree with you, what you said. I would not find that offensive in any way, shape, or form. Um, I was just wondering if you had, this is probably not the right place to call for this. If you had any information about how to get out of this country without a passport. That's an interesting question. I know you can walk into Tijuana. I've done it myself. I just walked right across the border with a driver's license. So I, to walk into Tijuana, I didn't need anything at all. And um, to get out? To get out, I had that was back right after they changed it. You needed a passport to get back in the United States, but I did it with just a driver's license. Right. We've actually heard from people. If you want, hang on, Raymond. We can talk further about that here in a moment. Because um, we did have a caller call the show saying that, that even though they claim you need a passport, you can do what you did at yep. Demo and that they'll just basically lecture you for a little while. More coming up. This is Free Talk Live. You take control. Ugh, cold winter weather. It makes my skin so dry, itchy, and irritated. Can I get some help, please, for this winter skin of mine? Cortisone 10 Intensive Healing has the strongest non-prescription itch medicine available. Its seven moisturizers help heal skin, so you'll stop itching and start feeling relief fast. Ah, my skin feels like it's been on vacation, even with 10 inches of snow outside. Itch-free, worry-free, Cortisone 10. Use as directed. Award-winning Nobel Prize nominee Dr. Joel Wallach will be speaking January 7th at Faith Tabernacle Church, 2025 4th Street, North Minneapolis, and January 8th, Shiloh Temple, 1201 West Broadway Avenue, North Minneapolis. For more information, Information call 763-291-5052 or 763-221-8432. That's 763-291-5052 or 763-221-8432. Gold. It's like nothing else on earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Free Talk Live. My father was a police officer most of my life. He went to prison for police brutality. Oh, and wow. my father was the chief. What was he like at home with you when you were growing up? Was he violent with you? He never with me. He practically ignored me, actually. I never really had a relationship with him, but hmm. extremely violent to my mother. He beat her up oh, practically every day of my life. Oh, my God. He never touched me or my sisters or my brothers. Did he, he have a drinking never, problem? No, he's never drank alcohol. In his wow, so life. violent without uh, alcohol. Very interesting. I lived in a very small town in West Virginia, and my 
sisters and I and my brothers, we could do whatever we wanted. There were no laws for us. I could drive as fast as I want. You said that he abused your mother, beat her uh, frequently. Did she ever leave him? Yes, numerous times. She couldn't do anything because there was no help for her. There was no, there were no police to call to help her. There was yeah. no help for her because my father was very well connected. He knew everybody in the state. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You're talking about uh, 3D printing. 3D printing in this case that has gotten a lady in a a female artist in Japan arrested and charged with distributing obscene data. Because in Japan, you can't have uh, any kind of media that depicts genitals. Clearly depicts genitals. Correct. You can have uh, pixelated genitals. If it's blurry, it's all right. And I don't know how many pixels is required to consider it pixelated, but uh, so arbitrary. Something that, you know, where it can't where you can't see any moles, I guess, on somebody's <laughs> whatever. And so this lady's facing charges. We'll talk more about that here in a moment because I think there's some interesting questions that uh, that can be asked about it. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And, uh, of course, you can join us on Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. Coming up on March 28th and 29th, you'll want to be in downtown Austin, Texas, for the second annual Bitcoin conference, the Texas Bitcoin conference at the Moody Theater in downtown Austin. It's going to be a great event, speakers, exhibitions, a great opportunity to do some networking, and they'll be hosting the second million-dollar Bitcoin 2.0 hackathon. It's the second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference. They'll highlight what Bitcoin means to everyone and uh, see where the technology can go beyond just being a currency. So if you want a glimpse into the future, you'll want to be in Austin on March 28th and 29th. Go to TexasBitcoinConference.com. Get your tickets now. Get registered uh, with code FTL. You'll save $25 off the already affordable $150 price point. So knock $25 off of that by using code FTL, like Free Talk Live, over at TexasBitcoinConference.com. And everyone who uses code FTL, another $25 from your ticket price will go and is donated to the Sean's Outpost, which is a homeless charity that's operating only on Bitcoin, and they're doing great work. So go to TexasBitcoinConference.com. Use code FTL to get your tickets. We will look forward to seeing you there. Mark and I were there last year, and we're excited to be returning to the event this year. It's March 28th and 29th, the Moody Theater in downtown Austin. Go to TexasBitcoinConference.com and use code FTL. we got Raymond. He's in New Jersey. Raymond, you were asking how easy is it to get out of the United States. And, Damo, you said you just walked across the border. Yeah, that was in uh, 2011 when Pete and I were doing Liberty on tour. Didn't you go down there for a dentist appointment or something yeah, like that? Yeah, I was down there to uh, get some dental work done, and I did it, so I did it twice in like a week. I walked. So you walked across the border more than once, so it wasn't like a fluke. No, it was like not, that. and uh, I walked across. Now, where was it? I mean, describe where you, did you cross it like some desert location, or were you right there at the border checkpoint? Man, there what? were like bus stops and fast food places on like both sides, mm-hmm. and uh, more corporate wow. Cheney on on this side than the other but yeah it was in san diego and you walked right into tijuana and basically on the way down like you're coming to the highway and they're like last stop before border and checkpoints for the cars mm-hmm. and last exit and you get off and the second time i just got i got dropped off but the first time we just parked there's a bunch of parking like lots like pay all day to park and mm. 
uh, you walk down and everyone kind of funnels towards the one big building and, uh, you know, on the, each side of it is like duty free and like tax free stuff and a few snacks spots, but essentially you go through the, I, I don't know if it's like, I forget what building it's called, but it's the United States government building. And to go into Mexico, it's very easy. You walk in and you go like it, up a ramp and around and then over the road and then down into Mexico and boom, you're there. It's no big deal. Like, wow. There is no line. It takes less than five minutes. Like sure. They make you go around and up, uh, you know, circular concrete stairwell that's like angled and what's going on with that uh, what's well the it's just to funnel you through the building mm-hmm. i believe and You're so going like through a building well it, it's like uh it's like attached to an outside of a building but mm-hmm. like it's like you know you could there's not like walls it's like open to the right and then on the left is the wall to whatever they have inside their building okay it's just weird they just Who's funnel you over this it? path well that's the I, I don't i don't know what if it's like a a um uh, what what do they call a foreign like u.s Thing. He's like an embassy. Yeah, I don't know if it's like that or even like a uh, a border checkpoint building. You know, like an is ICE it building. US or it is, is it? the US. Okay. And then you so that's, this that's thing my is like question is can you get deep into Mexico without a passport? Well, that that answer I wouldn't have um, for a per, from personal experience. From what I understand, you can. I just I, it just depends. Like here, you know, like you can get as far as you want into the United States. It's just when do you have any interaction with? you know, the local uh, king's men. Yeah, that's a good right. point, right? So you can get in, but eventually if uh, la policia decide they want to talk to you, then, uh, you know, do you have paperwork to show them at that point? And well, if it's you don't, then what happens? To get back into the United States, too. And so, like, if if from that way, but I, you could walk right into Mexico. You could walk into Tijuana. I assume you could walk into other areas that have, you know, the access that's like, you know, El Paso right. or... Uh, similar cities on the border. Um, And then how far would you get? Well, it depends. You know, if you go to a heavily populated city, you probably have more likelihood of uh, interacting with, you know, agents of the state. I've heard that riding on buses in Mexico is maybe a good way to travel great distances because, you know, trains or trains or whatever. Then you're not driving, you know, you're not going to get pulled over or anything like that. So if you have to travel around within Mexico, there may be more safe ways to do it and avoid being uh, detected by the so-called authorities. And, and by the way, I'm not a criminal of any kind. I just I just have really large government debt here. Ah, okay. Oh, you're it's, going on vacation. It's <laughs> not bankrupt. It's not bankruptable. Well, you probably want to no. check out an Acapulco then uh, down in Acapulco, which is coming up later, a little bit later on here in the uh, late February range. Wow. I don't know how soon you're planning on going, but you might want to check out anarchapulco.com. There's a community of a small community of some liberty-oriented people living there, like Jeff Berwick and uh, and Angel Clark. Really? So there you go. Yeah, you can get across the border no problem. It's just you know, what do you do with a from that point on? And by the way, I totally agree with you guys on on the other thing, and and thank you oh, for taking the my vagina call. thing. <laughs> okay, <laughs> hey, thanks, you Raymond. Have, you good, have a great. Good. I love your show, by the way. Thanks, man. Well, hey, show. when you make it into Mexico, uh, give us a call and let us know how it went. Actually, I might come to New Hampshire instead, but <laughs> okay. hey, that Mexico, great. New Hampshire, that's yeah, good. We'll look forward to seeing you wherever. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Yeah, we had a dude called uh, right after they made that new rule that said you have to have a passport to get back into the United States. And he said he also crossed on the southern border and was able to get back in. But the only thing was he was inconvenienced by them basically detaining him and lecturing him as they tried to you know figure out or verify who he was or something like that. Yeah, like, neither time did I get taken out of line, but I had a longer... Uh, interaction with you know i don't for anyone who's ever been through the border like you, it's like a really long line and mm-hmm. it took like hours to get through it but uh, once so you walking you were walking back across yeah and it was a long line yeah like mm-hmm. all the way out the building like beforehand it's so a, walking into mexico no problem five minutes yep going uh, out trying to get back in the united states four to six hours whoa and then for like a 45 second interaction that was a two minute interaction for me because I only had a, an ID. So you get a few more additional questions. They tongue lash you a little bit. And mm-hmm. I like I essentially said to him, like, well, I'm an American because I'm, I'm like standing around all these thugs. And so I'm like, you can either kick me out or let me in. Like, you know, like it doesn't really matter to me at this point. And so, <laughs> you know. So they let you in. Yeah. He's just like, whatever. They go. And like he's and then he told me to get a passport today. And I was like, it takes like a week. Like I can't even get one today. Like I don't. 
So anyway. yeah, I'm not interested in getting a passport personally because uh, I guess they run some sort of treasury check on you now, and there's Ugh. like all kinds of invasive stuff. Uh, but I did get the world passport. I just haven't yet taken the time to use it. Have you heard about that before? Well, I have heard about it, but I've, I don't know if I've heard of anyone using it. Yeah, I've, I've uh, I, there's a, the guy who's made it has used it for decades, and he's also been arrested 20 times for it. <laughs> there's more coming up. You can take control here and bring up whatever's on your mind. 855 450 free, free talk live. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The Empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. I am a non-attorney spokesperson. Attention men who've taken Androgel or any other testosterone therapy products. Androgel or other low-T products have been linked to heart attack, stroke, pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, even death. Scientific studies indicate that the use of testosterone therapy products may double a man's risk of heart attack. If you or a loved one took Androgel or a testosterone therapy product and suffered from a heart attack, stroke, pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, or any other cardiac event, you might be entitled to financial compensation. You have rights, and you need to let us fight for your rights. And you pay no fees unless we win. So call the Tort Attorneys right now. 800-708-7917. 800-708-7917. 800-708-7917. Cases may be referred to participating law firms in your jurisdiction. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want, whether it's how to cross the border without having to talk to a bureaucrat. Apparently, you can do that on the way down to Mexico. Yes, yeah, walk right in. 
Um, and then also what we started the show with was the artist from Japan who has been making a career, a bit, I guess, out of uh, making things out of her vagina. And what I mean by that is sculptures, like uh, a kayak or a picture frame. And the way the picture frame works is that it's a very small area in which you can see the photo. The frame <laughs> itself is, uh, well, I guess shaped kind of like a vagina, but it's not really as obvious. The picture frame, the cell phone case, not as obviously a vagina as the kayak, which is what it is that has gotten this young lady in trouble. She is, well, young lady, she's 42, she's a middle-aged lady. Um, and she's in. She's now facing two years in prison. She's been arrested. She's facing charges for distributing so-called obscene data. The reason why it's considered obscene data when it's a sculpture is that it's a 3D printable sculpture. And so the supposed crime here is distributing the file, the 3D printable file, that someone could then load into their printer and make one of their own of these uh, kayaks. Seems that- like that would be easy to beat if the... Uh- you know, like, you mean the court case? The case in a court case, sure. Like, I mean, from some a lawyer perspective, you know, like, yeah, I don't know what the Japanese legal system is like. I don't know how Western it is, uh, but in you know, in a Western system, she might be able to get a jury, and then who knows what they would have to say about this. But I don't know if it would be easy to beat based on the statute. I mean, essentially, it it is a vagina, sort of, but not really. It's a sculpture of a of a vagina. It's based on her real vagina. Uh, they're claiming this is obscene data. I guess it would I guess be an interesting it, case, that's yeah, for sure. How those words are defined and if there's any loopholes, I guess. It just seems like it would be full of loopholes. I want to hear from you. What do you think about this? The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Should she be facing prison time for this? Is this a crime to distribute a sculpture? Is it a crime to even display this sculpture? I would say no. I think that there's nothing inherently sexual about this. I mean, if if the idea is that sex is obscene, and I think that's the suggestion, is that sex things that are sexy are somehow bad, which I don't agree with, but that's what certainly the governments seem to think. Um, nakedness isn't necessarily sexual. Certainly people will affiliate nudity with sexuality, but the one and the two aren't necessarily the same. Right, and why why do they do that, though? Like, why do they... You know, if have people been, you know, because it's long skirts and cover and do that mm-hmm. for so long, you know, we were talking during the break about, n- you know, nipples and the free nipple campaign. It's Free like, the nipple? Free right? the nipple, yep. And, uh, you know, why is it that men run around topless, but like there's this double standard that when women do it, it's like, it's oh, bad. wow, what about that? Yeah, there's a huge double standard there. And, and we can talk about that too. Let's go to Don. He's in Tennessee. You're on Free Talk Live listening via tune in. Hello, Don. Hey, how y'all doing? Good, sir. Uh, uh, you're, well, I don't understand this uh, fixation on the woman's vulva, but, uh, I mean, if a child was walking down the street and, you know, and there it was, you know, in the window, uh, you know, how would you explain that to a child? But uh, I don't know. Why is it hard uh, to explain? That's a vagina well, statue. I would assume that this child has probably asked this question you know, during bathing, like, you know, even asking about their own parts on themselves? Okay, well, I'm I'm not going to get hung up on it. I mean, y'all seem fixated on it. But uh, on the question of Mexico <laughs> on immigration, okay, y'all want to laugh. Uh, but on the question of immigration uh, into Mexico, you know, you can go into Tijuana, you can go into Mexicalis, you can go into Nogales, Juarez. Uh, Laredo, Matamoros. That's awesome. You know, that's, that's, that's pretty easy, but uh, going further south, you know, in the Durango, uh, Hermosa, Silo, uh, you know, uh, yes, you do need a, a visa to do that. I mean, if so you're, you're saying there are some, there, cr- so you're, you're saying there are some points on the border where the Mexican bureaucrats will check for... I think he's implying passport. that they're further oh. in. There's inland checkpoints. Are there inland? Right. Uh, the, the, further, the further south you go, I mean, if you're going to spend any amount of time there, uh, yes, you do need a, a visa. I mean, it's only a two-week process. Uh, I got my... I served 12 years in the military. I got out in 92... And then I went over to Iraq for KBR in 04, and I got my first passport. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and you know, it's before, you know, now I understand I got some kind of RFID. 
and you just walk by the scanner and you just wave your passport and they've got all your information. I doubt it's that easy. I don't think it's it's that simple. Yeah, there are RFIDs in there, but they're still going to want to look at it. The, the bureaucrat's still going to want to well, check the well, picture, you know, that kind of thing. Well, yes, uh, certainly. But, but so uh, Are you saying that when you were in Mexico that you were checked, uh, you know, at, in, at internal oh, points? Oh, oh. Absolutely, they'll they'll come on the bus and uh, oh, really? they'll come on the bus and just because you're a waito, you know, um, a white guy, you know, uh, they want to know uh, what you're doing. Uh, they want to know how much money you got, uh, what's in your bag. Hmm. Shake uh, it down you down a little know, bit. What, yeah, pretty much. Uh, you know, uh, take in for questioning. Uh, you know, do you have any gang? Do you have any drug affiliations? Uh, you know, we go down and install uh, solar water pumps and and uh, solar installations and stuff like that. And you know, and you know, there'll be a party of four or five of us, and you know, just going through the hassle. I mean, there's so much corruption down there. You know, just trying to help the people. Uh, you know, uh, against the government. I mean, and it's getting so bad here that. That you know, with a within 150 miles of the border, at any time you could be stopped and. and uh, now you're talking about in the United States, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah, they've where, got the internal checkpoints here. Yeah, where are your papers? Uh, you know. It's, it's very crazy. disturbing, uh, I have to say. And there's video footage of this out there. Of course, uh, Checkpoint USA is a great website. I don't know if it's being updated these days, but I know Terry oh, over there oh, has, has done some great work. Our block has done so much work uh, as far as this, you know, how to refuse the checkpoint. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, they ask, are you a citizen? Is it any of your business? Do I have the right to freely travel in my own country? Yeah, I love those videos where people will go up against these Border Patrol guys and just refuse to answer questions and ultimately... Yeah. Usually they get waved through. Every now and then they get uh, their butt beaten. But yeah, you, know. you get a guy who's oh yeah, all jacked up and ready to use his taser. There's no guarantees. The there's no no tactic that is guaranteed to work on every bureaucrat. But Don, thanks for your call tonight. I appreciate the story and the Hi. experience. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. So Don's saying, you know, maybe the deeper you get into Mexico, the more difficult things get, and maybe the whole idea of riding the bus that I had suggested earlier might not be such a great idea. Sure. I was wondering, I was going to ask him quick. I've never been, so. Yeah, I haven't I been in deep into Tijuana is the only time I've ever right. been to Mexico, and so I wouldn't know, but I wonder if, like, maybe some, uh, if maybe you're not heading to the big cities. You know, I don't know how, you know, like, just as it would be here, you know, if, if you're heading, you know, 100 miles in and if you can get like into the middle or, you know, I guess you get less police contact, right? There's less population, you know, it just. Can you get a visa way. without a passport? Uh, in Mexico? Yeah, I wonder about well, that. Well, I did I did call and try to figure this out once. And so like, like, like he was mentioning, I forgot what it was called, like an M2 or an M4 is their form for like a six month visa Okay. Uh, there. And so like then every six months you'd have to leave. But um I had asked them, like, well, what if you're just, like, distraught with the United States government and you want to be, like, a political exile? An and asylum, like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they were like, well, we kind of get this question a lot, and we don't I really bet. know what to do about it. And, like, she's like, most people are just getting this M4 form or whatever it is and then checking out, like, to, to the country next door. Right, go to and then coming right or back something or whatever it is. For a weekend, know. yeah, or a what's week. on the other side. Yeah, and then they come back. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know. It's, like, it's it seems to be an issue that might arise because it doesn't, People always think that like only people from Mexico come to the United States, but the reality is there are people fleeing sure. to Mexico, as you know, you know, with the uh, Acapulco. Right. It doesn't seem like a terrible place to flee to. I mean, as far as if you're looking to if you're looking to get the hell out, then yeah, it's convenient and you can walk right across the border, so you can't beat that really. Yeah, it's close enough. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. If you've got experience south of the border and you want to share that with us you're welcome to do so us gringos don't know much about that here on this program 855-450 free 855-450-3733 we're live here on sunday night free talk live here's a special message for those of you who owe the irs at least ten thousand or more in back taxes the irs has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars 
Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Award-winning Nobel Prize nominee Dr. Joel Wallach will be speaking January 7th at Faith Tabernacle Church, 2025 4th Street, North Minneapolis, and January 8th, Shiloh Temple, 1201 West Broadway Avenue, North Minneapolis. For more information, call 763-291-5052 or 763-221-8432. That's 763-291-5052 or 763-221-8432. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday edition of the program. Plenty of time for you with your calls and thoughts. You can bring up anything that you'd like. Coming up, gun owners are concerned in Maryland that the police are targeting them for traffic stops. Wouldn't surprise me if that were true. Toll free number here tonight, 855-450-FREE. And despite what the last caller suggested, we're really not obsessed with uh, the vagina artist here, Megumi Igarashi. First time I've ever heard of her was when I saw this uh, this news article, but I do think that the issue brings up some important questions, uh, and what the issue is is that this lady is facing prison time now for so-called distribution of obscene data for having a file, a 3D printable file that one could load into a 3D printer and print out something uh, like a kayak. It's essentially a kayak modeled after her vagina, and 
unusual for sure. Uh, unique, yeah. And that's probably what makes it uh, a desirable product. And illegal? I don't think it should be illegal. That's pushing it. Yeah, I don't think that uh, what this lady has done is obscene. I don't think there's anything immoral about sure. who's body being protected. Parts. Who would be harmed? You know, well, like, the children. Uh, our last caller suggested, how would you explain this to a child? If, well, I if would, they saw this vagina kayak on display in some sort of a, a window on Main Street, what would mom or dad say? Well, my answer to that is, assuming that question is this child is, you know, five to ten years of age, I guess. And if by that time you haven't had a conversation about private parts, <laughs> male or female, with a kid... You're probably doing it wrong. And so the kid is probably at a, some age like, well, what's this, daddy, on themselves, mm-hmm. mom? And that was the time to have that conversation. Or I guess if you've waited until you've walked by the vagina <laughs> kayak, then that's this is time now, as yeah, you know, you have a life-size model here right. to like talk about. So like, that's what I would say. Yeah. Why is uh, talking, you know, in general to, to kids or your own children about Sex, such a scary thing for parents. Why is it so bad to talk about things like that? I don't know. I, I think it's a, it. well. It's it's got to be years of, you know. I don't think my parents' parents talked to them very much about it, and then some except, didn't talk at all or at yeah. all, right? Uh, and so it hasn't been, uh, you know, something that people have been accustomed to talking about. And so it must be the Puritanism, right? Like the Puritanism of the past. Do you think that this? And I'm curious. I don't know. Do you think that over in Europe, which is generally considered to be sort of more sexually liberal, like you can see nudity on television at nighttime regularly in Europe, at least that's what I hear. I've never sure. never been there. Um, but, you know, from, from what I understand, the general difference, one of the differences in entertainment between the U.S. and Europe is that in the U.S., you can see all kinds of violence on television late in, you know, in the primetime hours on TV, but you don't see nudity. Whereas in Europe, you're more likely to see nudity on uh, television over there. Do European parents have the same hangups that American parents do with having the the conversation about sex with their kids? I don't know any European parents. I would, I mean, if it, I didn't even know that uh, you could see nakedness on TV at late night out there, but. Uh... It would seem that I that would be the case. I presume you still can. That's that's what I've always heard about Europe. Yeah, um, it would seem to be the case if that were how it was working out, but I don't know from any experience. So if you're walking along the street and you see this vagina kayak in the store window and you know kid asks you about it, why not just say, well, that's a giant sculpture of vagina? I sure. Mean, that's, how hard is it to explain that? You'd be like, well, oh. what is a vagina? Well, here you go. You have a whatever long walk home <laughs> or yeah, exactly. a detour. And uh, it seems like as good a time as any, and maybe they should stop and thank the artist. So I don't, uh, I'm really upset by the idea of obscenity, period. I, I mean, this is one example of it, but as I mentioned, there have been some pornographers here in the United States who face similar charges for distributing so-called obscenity. Now, to be fair, the porn that they were distributing is you know, some pretty sick stuff, like... I don't want to get into any detail about what kind of sick stuff, but let's just say bodily fluids are involved in some of this, and it's kind of gross. Um, But, you know, some people are into that, and it's not like anybody's forcing it on anyone who doesn't want it. The actors who are acting in it are getting paid. You know, they're consenting. Uh, The people who are purchasing it are consenting to purchase it. So where's the crime in that act? But yet, you know, Max Hardcore is what his stage name is. He went to prison. Yeah, and you know it's well not only ruining somebody's life to go to prison for right. consensual interactions and destroying but, his business at the and same his time. business right and, and any of the the domino effect of the employees anybody else who benefited from that indirectly, um, but uh, the consen- consensual acts so like it also hides like it drives up the price of this and hides this into the black market sure. you know what I mean and which so is like, scary which makes these things not only like from the economic standpoint like probably more expensive you know you gotta. Probably pay twice as much to shoot this thing at a certain place because now right. somebody has to worry about getting in trouble. But it also increases the danger. You know, maybe some of these workers are are now you know because the cost is so high, it's easier to just or more you know to force them to do it than to pay them to do it. You know, and so you start making this stuff dangerous for for people. And and as we've seen with drugs, maybe not in the same extent. Uh, but the, it's, the demand isn't going to go away. You know, even if it's a small market, you, exactly. you stated you're not into this. I'm not into that either. I wouldn't. Somebody will still be into it, even s- if it's criminalized. Exactly for sure. And so it's just the, the the government getting involved in it all, even for the kayak version, even for just the art aspect. You know, like they push this. They're they're going to ruin this woman's lives. 
and take a lot of, you know, like let's say they cage her for the two years she's facing, then everybody who wasn't involved in this, you know, through some sort of taxation or coercion is going to have to pay for this woman's incarceration. Her life is Yeah, ruined. how crazy is that? It's just insane of the domino effect. Like if they just left it alone, it wouldn't be, you know, like the market would figure it out. Like either this woman would have a successful career and go about her business and be a contributing member of society and no one else would be harmed or the demand wouldn't be there and she would move on to 3D printing something else. You know, it would be interesting to see uh, or to hear what the conversations are like in Japan about these issues because, again, this is a place where if you make pornography, you can't actually show genitals. They have to be blurred out or a black dot uh, is placed over that area of the screen. They're, they have to obscure that. But yet you can still show the action uh, of someone having sex with another person. You can still show the entire shot. You just have to blur out the one area where the genitals are. I mean, I'd be, it'd be interesting to hear people arguing that. Like, what? What are you really hiding here exactly? I mean, you're showing all of the the sexy action. Now they know what's behind the blur. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, it's like there's no more mystery. Who, <laughs> I, right? Who, who would argue that we need to keep the blur? I mean, what? Right. Like after you've had intercourse with somebody, you would now know that what what beh- what's behind door one, yeah. right? Like, what what? Uh, I wonder how long that's been going on. I don't know. As long as I can remember, I mean, I I'm, I don't search for Japanese porn, but every now and then I did see some of the tentacle porn, and I think they even blurred in the tentacle porn, which is really weird stuff. I have way. no idea what <laughs> you're talking about. I can't really say much more because we're on the radio and you can't get right. uh, too detailed on what goes on. But you know, it's porn involving tentacles. You can in- imagine what that uh, what yeah. that could mean. So our toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE. And you can join us via Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. You know, so there was there was one caller earlier who seemed kind of uncomfortable with us talking about this subject. And I imagine there are some others out there who find this to be an uncomfortable topic as well. But really, I don't have a problem if somebody wants to be nude. I mean, this is about a sculpture, which is offending people, but it wouldn't bother me if this artist wanted to walk nude down the street. That's no big deal. Wouldn't offend me all. We had the uh, topless protests that took place here in Keene. Yeah, and, and did you know that that uh, protester, the there were two. There was Topless Tuesdays, and before that, there was one young lady who walked down the street while open carrying a firearm. That lady uh, has since recanted and has spoken against her own protests. Do you yeah, know that? Did I did you know, know that. I made a comment about that and got scolded by that individual. Really? What or, was your yeah. comment? Ah, uh, man, I can't. I, I was trying to think of it as you were, were talking this, but it was, uh, I don't know. It's similar to like what I've said about, you know, other people who, you know, uh, stand on, you know, they're, they're calling out other people's mistakes while standing on a pile of mistakes, mm-hmm. essentially. And so uh, I think it was a cop out. Uh, I don't remember it in exact detail because it was in the moment. It totally but. was a cop out, and yeah. I mean, it was it was great activism. I mean, it was memorable, and and she actually ended up getting an apology from the police because the cops arrested her. Yeah, I remember that. I remember and, the video itself. Yeah, and they let her out, and then issued an apology, which you never see the police do. I mean, almost never do the police apologize for the I've things they get wrong. I've never had one apologize. Right. And so the fact that the police actually issued an apology really shows that they realized they stepped in it. You know, right. they, they did the wrong thing in that particular case. And following that, the Topless Tuesdays went without any arrests, That's right? Correct. For, For two many weeks, weeks right? Just, it was oh, just like two? two? It died okay. off. That was a couple months. Real fast. I know it didn't last long. I don't know. No, it was like one week where there was eight people out there and a handful of guys. Right. So it was like four, four girls, four guys. And then like the next week there were two girls. And, and then after done. that, it was, it was over. Well, so. the free the nipple, maybe they'll. Uh, but yeah, it's coming. You're it saying back. that there's like a big thing now, like a tra- a Twitter trend. Yeah, well, that's where it started. And I guess it's it's now evolved to like a documentary, uh, freethenipple.com. dot com. Well, it's uh, about damn time. I mean, it's 2015 now, and women still don't have the same right to be in public topless as a man. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Silly. It is absolutely ridiculous. So share your thoughts with us here, 855-450-FREE. Coming up, are gun owners being targeted to being pulled over in Maryland and harassed by police? Free Talk Live. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Majid lives in nor Devin, Armenia, with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Stouffer's, helping bring your family together with wholesome dinner options, even on the busiest of nights. Find dinner table ideas to bring your family together at letsfixdinner.com. To get kids involved in dinnertime conversation, ask specific questions, not broad ones. Instead of what happened today at school, try what was the best thing that happened today. The more specific you are, the more they'll have to say. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, January 2nd, 2015. Gold is trading at $1,184, silver at $16.02, and Bitcoin is trading around $315.93. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest, most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Your job, your home, your car, your money. All of these provide you with a sense of security. But what about your family security? What have you done to prepare if all of these things were gone? eFoods Direct has the food security you need. For every emergency, eFoods Direct is food security. Go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Beat for 50% off their food preparation planning packs. In the news, on Monday, the ACLU and Human Rights Watch demanded that the U.S. Department of Justice appoint a special prosecutor to investigate the CIA's use of torture methods. In a letter to Attorney General Eric Holder, the civil rights groups said the recent Senate Intelligence Committee report on the CIA includes new information that should be properly investigated. The group stated that failure to conduct a comprehensive criminal investigation would contribute to the notion that torture is acceptable. On Wednesday, leaders of the Senate Judiciary Committee announced that they were seeking details from the Obama administration regarding federal law enforcement's use of cell phone surveillance technology. In a bipartisan letter to the Departments of Justice and Homeland Security, Senators Patrick Leahy and Chuck Grassley requested more information about a recent policy change by the FBI regarding how surveillance equipment is used. 16 Iowa farmers and companies have filed suit against Syngenta Ag for losses incurred after China rejected corn shipments containing a genetically modified seed made by the corporation. The lawsuits state that Syngenta has caused damage to U.S. farmers, grain handlers, and exporters. The farmers also call Syngenta negligent for prematurely selling the seed before it was approved by countries that are major markets for U.S. corn exports. This broadcast of the Liberty Beat is made possible by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project 
while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To find out more, visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise. This is The Liberty Beat for Friday, January 2nd, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. This is a Liberty Beat special report. An Austin Police Department detective is suing the city of Austin, claiming the department retaliated against her after she filed an internal affairs complaint for alleged sexual harassment and discrimination. Detective Brenda Bermudez, who has been with the department since 2001, asserts in her lawsuit that during her time with the Human Trafficking Division, male detectives would physically block her from entering the room when they were dealing with nude women during undercover operations, so as to prolong the encounter with the unclothed female. The lawsuit also says that male APD employees would show Bermudez, who is a lesbian, online pornographic images of women from prostitution websites and then ask her if she would have sex with them. After Detective Bermudez took the allegations to Internal Affairs last year, she was transferred to the auto theft unit, while her male counterparts remained with the Human Trafficking Division. Additionally, the city reprimanded Bermudez for alleged sexual harassment of her male co-workers. The lawsuit comes on the heels of a recently released dash cam video showing two Austin police officers joking about raping a woman. Police accountability activists in Austin took to social media to lay blame at the hands of Austin Police Chief Art Acevedo, whose leadership they claim has become known for being lenient on misconduct while punishing and firing officers who complain against their fellow officers. The Liberty Beat will keep you up to date as this story continues to unfold. The Liberty Beat is sponsored in part by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Support also comes from The Corey Moore Show, live every Friday night at 10 o'clock Eastern at CoreyMooreShow.com. This is The Liberty Beat for Friday, January 2nd, 2015. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. House of Representatives Bill 323, the IHOP should stay open all night so we can get some Pancakes Act. This bill was submitted for immediate review very late last night under the provisions of the National Emergency Legislation Act. Can we turn dim the lights? It's really bright. H.R. 323 would, by federal order, require all IHOP restaurants to, quote, Remain open 24 hours effective right this minute, even if some manager has to get out of bed and drive down here to start making some pancakes. Well, we stand by the bill. Right. We wrote it, apparently. This bill would also require the federal government pay to build a tram or monorail or whatever connecting yeah. the Black Sheep Pub right, on North Capitol Street to all IHOP I, restaurants I think in the we city. made some illustrations The of bill that. gives the estimated cost of the tram as probably not even that much. You are wasting my time and the time of this Excuse committee. Me, I gotta go. What? <clears throat> Congressman, this committee is go. still in session. You can't... This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You may dial in toll-free to bring up anything you'd like at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online just by dropping by freetalklive.com. With you tonight, it's Ian. And Adamo. Lots of cool stuff over at freetalklive.com, and it's all totally free. We're going to go right into your calls and thoughts. But coming up, gun owners in Maryland are saying they think they're being targeted by Maryland police for traffic stops and subsequently searches we'll tell you more about that here in a moment we got a demo from copblock.org on the show here tonight as uh, my co-host and let's go to kit first in worcester mass kit you're on free talk live hi how you guys doing tonight go ahead kit we're doing great okay um i was married to a japanese girl i met in japan and we were we were married for about 12 years and i went back and forth and we also had a son we have a son together who's in the marine corps now Okay. So I know a lot about the Japanese culture and everything. I just posted something to your Facebook. I don't want to say it on the radio, hmm. but I sent you guys a message on Facebook under Kipper, and it's a Japanese fertility parade that they hold in Osaka every year to celebrate men being fertility, and pretty much the main thing of this, they have balloons, floats, everything. Is the male, you know, the member, penis. the penis, yeah, 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 and they have floats and everything, and it's, <laughs> you know, kids, kids are there, 
So it's a huge double cowboy. standard. Yeah. And if you if you go to uh, your Facebook, the Free Talk Live Facebook, I posted a picture that was taken at one of these fertility parades. That's why I don't understand why they they blur out all the other stuff. But in there, yeah, that's society, a big penis. I'm looking at the uh, I'm looking yeah. at the picture right now. It's a big pink penis being hoisted. Get this by a bunch of women. So uh, yeah, I mean, exactly, this is like. This is one of the most kind of like patriarchal, uh, male-dominated par- parades you could possibly imagine. There's a gigantic sculpture of a penis, you know. I just seen the picture. <laughs> unmista- it's unmistakable, and it's pink. And the women uh, below it that are carrying this thing, sort of like you see the guys carrying the Pope. You know right, the thing they right. carry yeah, the Pope yeah. on. They got one of those things basically, and uh, and then yeah, you know they're all wearing pink, the carrying this. Hmm? But what I'm saying is. If you go to the, the Japanese temples and things, which I've been to, all the different temples, you know, in every big town, Osaka, Hiroshima, stuff, there's paintings and things on the wall that are total pornography from the 16 and 15 and 1400s. Hmm. You know, and the children are not afraid of nakedness, and, you know, they'll change their bathing suits right on the beach. The women... The, the bathrooms are shared over there mostly, where you have you could be on the toilet, and a woman will walk right in and sit next to you on the toilet next. To you. Mm-hmm. It's not a big deal in Japan. It's just interesting. Not. So, like, so being um, in a bathroom, no problem. You can sit down and take you know, cop a squat right next to somebody. There's no yeah. wall uh, in between you, but yet, and no blur. <laughs> right, and no blur on the uh, the body the parts. Bath- but yet you can't no, show a penis or a vagina on film no. or on, in video without blurring it out. Even in the, even in the bathhouses, they have steam bathhouses that you've heard of in the mountains and things that mm-hmm. I've been to. The women are completely nude. The men are completely nude. And they're sharing the same bath. And there's That's... no, you know, you have your children there, your family. And it's, it's not a big deal. It's just that's the human anatomy. That's what you have. And. It's wow. not a big deal. Now, what is this parade called with the the big penis? Uh, for oh, the Jeff- the Osaka. That was the Osaka fertility parade. The t- and they fertility have that in parade. Various cities. Now, you say yeah, uh, on right. your message here, you said this was circa 1993. Is this still going today, to your knowledge? Oh, that's been going on for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Hmm. Fascinating. Yeah. Sounds like they should hold it. Maybe they should make a bunch of this woman's kayaks and then like have a parade and. That's and then why, the thing that got me is I know from, from my father-in-law being in Japanese business that the Yakuza is very big in Japan, the mafia. Mm-hmm. And this is true. And if you don't pay them somehow, some, because they work with the, they work straight with the government. Their, their government is even, believe it or not, guys, is more corrupt than our government. I don't know. It's possible. hard to measure. It's really hard to measure yeah, that. If the, there's a mob running this government, too, if you want to classify it as that, you know, a group of businessmen. Well, what I'm saying you know? is, I, I bet she ticked off the wrong people. Like, mm. like I don't know which one you guys mentioned it before. She did something to tick somebody in the government off. Could very well be. And they, so, so they was that what you were thinking when you heard this? Because just for our listeners that are just tuning in, the story was about a, a lady uh, artist who has made sculptures out of her own vagina, including larger-than-life yeah. ones like uh, the kayak, which was the one that got her in trouble, a uh, kayak size sculpture that you could then download with a 3D printable file. The government's going after her for so-called distribution of obscene data. Um, and, you know, they are claiming that they would do the same thing against someone who made a porn movie, essentially, because they have to be blurred out. Genital- genitals have to be blurred out. But yet here you are showing us a parade in Japan. And I'll take this picture and I'll put it on our Facebook. So actually, they, I don't know if Facebook is going to take us down for this. They, yeah, you might they, catch a band. They might, they might do me. that. On the sideline. Why, why does why don't the Japanese government take down all the pictures in the temples and things on the pottery and yeah? All well, that I do stuff. wonder if the caller's correct in the underlining because I didn't think the uh, the artist that's doing the sculpting of her vagina was the one. But when you mentioned the woman who she was caught with, because you mentioned that in the story, then the, 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 the way store they, owner, yeah. the store owner, and she's into making pornography, right? And so, like, maybe she was the target, at, and for helping this, or like maybe there yeah, is somebody. Somebody yeah. wasn't getting paid. Yeah, so maybe it's not the maybe it's not the one hundred percent reason, but it's like a bonus, or maybe the, the the artist is the bonus. Like, hey, we're we're teaching her a lesson about this other thing. Yeah, it was uh, a sex shop, yeah. is what the uh, the vagina it, kayak was being. As like in like a brothel or like. Well, but what 
like just a sex shop, like I a sex toy. Oh, okay. Rest you guys, but you know, it's not a big deal over there. Nudity, vagina, uh, breast, penises, everything. It's not a big deal in so, Japan. So what you're saying it's is really culturally it's not a big deal, but it's still illegal to make pornography that shows genitals. Yeah, and I think they put that out there so like the government can make money because it's it's like how they got Al Capone. They got Al Capone on tax evasion. And you know that isn't why the government wanted Al Capone was tax evasion. That's the only thing they could get him on. He was doing illegal booze and going against the government, you know, with prostitutes and mm. And I don't know. Uh, These the government competition, yeah. Yeah. So they had to get rid of him because he was making more government. He was making more money than the Chicago government. Kit, good call, so, man. I appreciate the. Tax uh, evasion. Yeah. Th- right. Thanks for the info tonight. Very useful information. Yeah. Showing a clear double standard where there is apparently it's illegal to have a kayak modeled after a <laughs> vagina, but to just have a. St- I mean. Just to just have a straight up picture of a penis, or not a picture, but a, a big model of a penis that is being toted down the street by a dozen women, all wearing pink, fine and dandy. I mean, th- this penis even has the the vein on it. I mean, it's that detailed. You know <laughs> no, what I'm talking about? No blurry. Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Right. <laughs> so you can share your thoughts here with us toll free at 855 450 free. I feel like I should post this on our Facebook page. It's not an actual penis. Is that still is that going to violate Facebook's terms of service? I mean, you're asking me, the guy who you've like, been banned more often than I have. Well, but I not know for this but stuff though. Right? I've never really been banned for anything I've actually po- created or posted. So like their their policies, their you know, it's like I don't know. How, like cop lock is loaded with people who will report you for anything. It's like mm-hmm. you can post a picture of a flower and say cops are bad, and they're like report, <laughs> report. And so I don't think Free Talk Live has it that bad, but uh, no. it's always a possibility. So I don't want to tell you to post it yeah, <laughs> and, right. then, and then I, hear I about your ban. You. I won't blame you but, for uh, it. But I, I, I understand your point. I mean, this is a clear uh, uh, pr- providing evidence of yeah. this double standard to the extreme. <laughs> so uh, Share your thoughts here with us at 855-450-FREE. I'll work on that during, uh, during one of the breaks, and I'll, uh, we'll let you know when that's available for you. Uh, so, toll-free number 855-450-FREE. In other news, gun owners are upset at what's been going on in Maryland. Stories are piling up. According to the Washington Times, a year ago this New Year's Eve, John Philippides of Florida was driving south with his family on I-95 when the Maryland Transportation Authority police pulled over his black Ford Expedition and proceeded to raid it while his twins, wife, and daughter looked on separated in the back seats of different police cruisers. The officers were searching for Mr. Philippides, uh, Philippides, Florida licensed palm sized Caltech 38 caliber semi-automatic handgun, which he left at home, locked in his safe. We'll tell you more about what happened here in moments. And could this happen to you in Maryland? 855, 450 free, has it happened? And now from the Cato Institute, the Cato Constitution Minute. Americans in 1787 were skeptical of the proposed U.S. Constitution. It proposed a much stronger national government than they were used to, and although the new government's powers were limited, Americans knew that government often breaks promises. A Bill of Rights, Thomas Jefferson said, was something everyone was entitled to against every government on earth. So supporters of the new system pledged that, if it were approved, Congress's first act would be to adopt a Bill of Rights as an extra safeguard against abuses. And they kept that promise on December 15, 1791. The Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments, along with government's limited powers, remind us that the Constitution was not written to make government more efficient, but to protect us against government and to secure our natural rights to life, liberty, and property. To learn more, visit the Cato Institute online at cato.org. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us The future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. 
Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you'd like, toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com. And speaking of online, if you care about privacy online, you need to know about ProXPN. It is a global virtual private network that encrypts your online data. So right now, if you're not using ProXPN, you are likely unencrypted, which means that your internet service provider can snoop on you. They can find out what websites you're going to. They're probably logging them right now and logging all the search terms that you enter as well, keeping those logs for, in some cases, as long as five years. You can go to ProXPN's website and download their software for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices. Linux users, setup's a little different for you, but you can also get ProXPN working fairly easily. And once you get ProXPN software installed and operational, you are then encrypted which will protect you from the prying and the spying. You can go to proxpn.com slash FTL. That's proxpn.com slash FTL and download their software when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account to get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world, the ability to privately torrent, and get past regionally blocked websites. Just use code FTL50 to save 50% off the price of the annual account over there. And by the way, once that first year's done, you get your next year renewal, and every year after that, you get the same great discount. So that savings is locked in for the lifetime of your account. At proxpn.com slash FTL, you get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, and they don't keep records of your online habits at ProXPN. So go to proxpn.com slash FTL and use code FTL50 to get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. Whether you want to talk about hypocrisy when it comes to banning genitalia representations in public, which is what apparently uh, Japan has done with one lady, but yet allows uh, male genitalia to be displayed in public in, I guess, in sculptured form without a problem. You're welcome to comment on that or just the idea of sort of sexual repression and why it is that people have a problem with genitalia at all being shown publicly as though that there's something wrong with that. I'm still not sure what that is. Maybe you can clear that up for me. Toll free numbers 855-450-FREE. Ian and Adamo in the studio here tonight. We'd begun telling you a story from the Washington Times about a family from Florida 
They were traveling down I-95 through Maryland when the police pulled them over and they began to search uh, through their, I guess, Ford Expedition while separating the wife and his twins, putting them all in back seats of different police cruisers while they searched through his car looking for a gun. A Keltec 38 caliber semi-automatic handgun, which he had actually left at home in his safe because he knew that Maryland does not recognize handgun permits issued by other states. So, you know, he was being cautious and left the gun at home. When the search turned up nothing, Mr. Philippidis, age 51, was allowed to go and was issued only a speeding warning. The incident gained national attention. The man went on multiple radio programs and det- uh, detailed how he, uh, how scared and outraged he and his family were. He wondered how did the police know that he was licensed for concealed carry, and what right did they have to search through his personal items on the side of the busy interstate filled with holiday travelers on that 10 degree day? That was my big question. I was like, how did they know the gun existed? My wife's hysterical, shaking and crying, said Mr. Philippidis, recalling in an interview with the Washington Times, quote, I don't have a criminal record. I own a business. I'm a family man. And I tried to explain that to the officer, but he had a bad attitude, didn't want to hear my story. He, d- he just wanted to find that gun and take me away from my family. That was his goal, but he couldn't do it because I didn't have a gun like I told him. Mr. Philippidis, er- his case earned the support of Second Amendment advocates and subsequent apologies from the Maryland Transportation Authority, which is, again, fairly rare for government agency to apologize. But an internal police review concluded his stop and search were lawful and didn't violate police protocols. Those findings, however, have not satisfied other out-of-state gun owners who worry that they, too, have been targeted for minor traffic stops in Maryland because they have concealed weapons permits. And those stories are accumulating. Take John Tonneson, the fourth of Lake Worth, Florida. He was pulled over and arrested after a search of his work truck by the same officer who stopped Mr. Philippidis. Turned up his 45 caliber Ruger, licensed in the state of Florida. He doesn't believe the stop was coincidental. He says it was unloaded and stuffed into a bag far from me. There are scanners in Maryland that scan every tag, and Florida is one of their target vehicles. They'll find whatever reason they can to pull you over. I was going to ask that if they had the the cop cars. That's what they mean, the ones that scan license plates, right? The license plate scanners. Yeah, yeah. so it's providing them information that says... So I didn't know that those scanned out of state plates as well. I mean, I it obviously... It figures they do. They're all tied into the same database, right? NCI, NCIS or whatever? I wasn't was, sure, and NCIS. I thought when those were first, uh, you know coming to police stations near you uh that the statement was that these were in house like so like if it's massachusetts they're only scanning massachusetts plates and that like right right well i mean i i don't believe it right (laughs) like they could all be together but that was one of the things like we're not gonna abuse this power too much well you know it's only been less than five years since those are new this is new technology i actually seen when i went down to boston a couple weeks ago i've i i me and uh another person that was in the car saw one i saw them for the first time and they're really mm. trippy and they like they have like the strobe light effect going on really? it's, it's just it's distracting actually wow i have not seen that then i saw some stuff on poles down in florida on the interstate but uh, when i talked to a friend of mine he said he thought they were just to monitor the traffic conditions but there were an awful lot of them so it seemed like they could have been some sort of scanner device these were on all four corners of the car front like you know like on the hood, oh, mounted to the okay. I'm what I saw were on poles on the side of the road. You no, meant, these were on, on a car, cruiser. a cruiser that moved, and yeah. he was weaving in and out of traffic. And as he would graze a car, you could see that it would like it would recognize a thing wow. and a plate, and then do its business. It's creepy stuff. We'll talk Very. more about what's happening in Maryland here in a moment. If you want to share your thoughts, do so. Let's go. And by the way, on whatever you want to talk about here on the live Sunday edition, toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. Rod is with us, listening in New Jersey. You're on Free Talk Live. Uh, Yes. um, Carl Sagan, the great scientist, said that um, if anybody is to be respected, it would be the the Jainis cult in India because they have such uh, great respect for life. And I'm wondering, like, um, I understand the people in India are very strict about, um, you know, uh, sexual matters. And I was wondering, where in the world does the Kama Sutra fit in? What is the purpose of the Kama Sutra? Kama Sutra is uh, it's an old book about sex, sexual positions, right? I've never read it, so I don't know. Neither have I. But I was wondering, um, 
Is that uh, to train young people to prepare for marriage, or is it to help uh, people to overcome their sexual uh, lusts and that sort of thing? Brother, I don't know. I can't give you an, an answer to that question because I have never done any research on the Kama Sutra. Have you looked at it before? I mean, I've, I remember the only thing I've ever seen is uh, when, when I was growing up, my parents had the joy of sex on their bookshelf. And, uh, you know, it's take peeks at that every now and then. But I've never seen the Kama Sutra. I think the, the National Geographic had a, uh, an article back in, around 1996. And I'd like to get a copy of that. And they show all the pictures of the temple with all the little sculptures on the outside of the temple. Mm -hmm. But I, do, I, I did try to do some research, and I, for the life of me, I cannot figure out what is the purpose of, of the Kama Sutra. Was it help, to help people to overcome themselves? or is it to help Maybe them, to have uh, a more enlightened sexual experience? That's a so damn that's good question, Rod, and we'll see if we can figure it out. Thanks for the call tonight. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I imagine Wikipedia might help clear something up, but we'll find out here in moments. You can also share your thoughts on whatever's on your mind. We'll talk more about the gun crackdown in Maryland in moments. Award-winning Nobel Prize nominee Dr. Joel Wallach will be speaking January 7th at Faith Tabernacle Church, 2025 4th Street, North Minneapolis, and January 8th, Shiloh Temple, 1201 West Broadway Avenue, North Minneapolis. For more information, call 763-291-5052 or 763-221-8432. That's 763-291-5052 or 763-221-8432. This is Dan Pillard. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpillard.com. Fossilized evidence reveals the Spazosaurus was the largest doofus ever to roam the Earth. And a new tandem mobility scooter is released. This is the Onion Week in Review, damn it, and we're going to need you to demonstrate a little decorum. Got it? This week, economists confirm that the booming tear gas industry continues to lead the world's economic recovery. Financial experts confirm that the growing demand for tear gas in countries like Turkey, Brazil, and Greece has increased over 20% annually over the past few years and is anticipated to continue playing a major role in the world economy. The market for tear gas just keeps sustaining itself and growing. We can only hope that more people demand tear gas in the coming months and the recovery will be here sooner than we thought. In other news, a community is devastated by the sight of an old man struggling up some steps. A stack of unused CDRs turns five years old and this shitty zoo is really promoting the hell out of their new fruit bat. Your diligence and patience have been noted. Prove yourself further at theonion.com. This is the Onion News Network. If you want to move to the free state you're looking for some real estate well i know a guy who's really great it's the realtor mark warden do you want a home with 20 acres a lakeside cabin any takers for renters buyers and sellers too mark warden is the guy for you porcupinerealestate.com the three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. 
Keen is the Liberty Media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. We're talking about everything from genitals to guns. 855-450-3733. Both are very offensive to some people. In this case, the guns are offensive to the police in uh, Maryland. Now, I'm talking about guns that you would have. Obviously, they're totally fine with Yeah, they love guns. Right, having guns for themselves. But if you drive through Maryland... And you have a pistol permit in some state. They've given two examples from Florida so far. If you've got a pistol permit in some state, there's a good chance, at least that's what gun owners are saying, there's a good chance you're going to get pulled over and searched in Maryland. Now, it sounds to me like these searches are illegal. I don't know if these guys are, are consenting to the search. We don't get that level of detail from the story here from the Washington Times, but obviously... I, I mean, well, I guess maybe I it's bet not you obvious. it's not matter. I bet you it's not going to matter because I wonder. I mean, did I mention if they're being? They're asking about the firearms, right? That's what you said in the first. Correct. Sorry, they did so, let the man know what they were looking for. Right, and so I bet you if they were trying to deny the search, they're going to pull the oh, we have probable cause because we know you have, have permit. this permit and this isn't allowed here. Well, I don't know if that would end up being held up as probable cause in court, but it, maybe it would. I, I could see it happening in the state, but maybe it have to. You probably have to go through the system a while. So change that. Th- there's more to the story. We can continue with that one here in a moment. Also, genitals in the form of a woman in Japan who's been arrested for having sculptures that are modeled on her vagina. Um, all the while, apparently, Japan has a male virility parade every single year, which involves a, at least one, if not more than one, large genital male genital sculpture. So huge double standard on that, which is sort of a there's a larger conversation there about what is obscenity, why is the stuff illegal, and then somebody else called in about the Kama Sutra, and you know you ask a question you don't and the hosts don't know the answer, we're going to tell you we don't know we're just talk show <laughs> hosts right, you know, just because we have uh, microphones in front of us doesn't mean that we are educated on everything in the world that's for darn sure. But we do have the Google. We do, and in this case, uh, Wikipedia has a little bit of information about said Kama Sutra. According to the Wikipedia entry, it is an ancient Indian Hindu text widely considered to be the standard work on human sexual behavior in Sanskrit literature written by Vatsyayana. I'm sure I'm butchering that. A portion of the work consists of practical advice on sexual intercourse. It's largely written in prose with many inserted Poetry verses, uh, Kama, which is one of the four goals of Hindu life, means desire, including sexual desire, the latter being the subject of the textbook. And Sutra literally means a thread or line that holds things together. And more metaphorically, it refers to an aphorism or a collection of such aphorisms in the form of a manual. Contrary to popular perception, especially in the Western world, Kama Sutra is not just an exclusive sex manual. It presents itself as a guide to a virtuous and gracious living that discusses the nature of love, family life, and other aspects pertaining to pleasure-oriented faculties of human life. So there's a little bit more info. You can dig deeper, I'm sure, if you'd like. On your own time, we go to Al. He's listening in Bangor, Maine. Al, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Adamo. America really needs to get its mind out of the gutter and all this filth. What is we filthy don't about the sex? People of India to teach us anything. Excuse me. What and is Indian so filthy religion. about sex, Al? And family life. If I may complete my thought, please. Okay, family go ahead. life in India. Why do we need their instruction? Did you know the custom in India and in Hinduism that the wife, when the husband dies, they build a big fire out of wood and sandalwood and that sort of thing. Put the husband's body in it, 
and then the wife is made to jump into the fire alive. I don't well, believe you know, anything that you say, Al, about things that happen around the world. Um, that's you know, I'm going to take sucky. that. Yeah, I'm going to take you that with a grain that, of salt. You can look that up on Wikipedia. The yeah. British put an end to that. S U T E E. The yeah. British went to India. There wasn't a single hospital. There wasn't a single orphanage. And just cruelty, cruelty to their fellow man. And it's primitive. The American people now are so debased. Their thinking has been so lowered that this primitive uh, primitive religion appeals to them. You said Carl Sagan and the Jainism. Carl Sagan praised them for they honored all forms of life. What Carl Sagan doesn't tell you, you go to the village and they let the rats and the snakes run free because they put all animal life on a level with human life. Okay, so you have some disagreements with the way uh, folks in other parts of the world live, Al, and certainly no, you're free to have those disagreements. It's not a disagreement. It's truth. Well, you don't know. Falsehood. You you know and you claim to have we, the truth, but there's a lot of people we, who claim to have the truth. I bet those his, people your claim truth. Yeah, those people claim to have the truth too. No, Al, not, I'd like to ask you some questions now. You said that truth. that people need to get their minds out of the gutter. Now, what is it that is in the gutter? What uh, what was it that prompted you making that statement? The preoccupation uh, with sex in America is we made a god out of liberty. We replaced the god of the Bible with the God of freedom. That's the meaning of the Statue of Liberty. You look at the Chinese word, they translate the Statue of Liberty as the goddess of freedom. We made a God out of freedom, and yet our minds were lower to purely, once we turn from God, we are lower to a purely animal level, and you can deal with it normally, or you can be preoccupied with it, and you can be used to drive the society. And what it is, it's a political weapon used against the people. This emphasis on sex... Now you like weapons, right? Because you called uh, last night, and you you have no problem putting people in a prison cell if they don't do what you want them to do. So what would you like to see happen, Al, with uh, people with their preoccupation with sex? You want a re-education camp or something like that for we them? We could have due proportion, first of all, we would take the filthiness of the mass media and this, this sewer pipe that comes out of Los Angeles and Sleep New York it. City, and we will make it wholesome. Oh, yeah. Edifying. Remember, How are you going like, to do that? Fathers, so are you going to nationalize uh, industry? Are you going to go in and seize it, the pornography studios and then seize the, the airwaves? Yeah, seize the TV t stations, well, seize the Hollywood studios? We give control of the media back over to the people. What's that mean? And, and so the seven corporations, which uh, which uh, pump out filth from the sewer pipe of Los So give Angeles me an example. I mean, are you talking? You're talking about taking all mainstream media, or just pornographers, or what? I'm talking. It's indistinguishable. A lot of it now that <laughs> the mainstream entertainment is indistinguishable. It's uh, uh, salacious. I mean, okay. it's. So what would you like to see happen? I just want to, yeah, I find, I find you to be fascinating, Al. I think it's, you know, it's very interesting what sort of world you want to live in. So I'd like to, to have you flesh it out some more for us here. So, um, so what would you like to see? I mean, Los Angeles, well, healthy, Hollywood. Healthy. Do you want to see the movie studios being given back to the people? Is that no, what you're saying? We want to restore respect for women and womanhood. Uh, well, you don't make pe you can't make people respect others, right? Like respect should be earned. You don't just point a gun at somebody and make them respect someone, right? Or without like well, it all starts. It all starts with right teaching that Ooh. woman is not a sex object. Or brainwashing. You see, and uh, well, there's not a lot I agree with you with Al, but I'll agree with you on that statement. Women are human beings, and they're much more than you know sex. Sexual objects. Um, there's but a lot sex, to them. And sex is a political. Is a political weapon used against us. Sure, sure. Let's not go there, though. I want to know more about what you want to do to the media. So you said give the media to the people. And so are you talking about, like, Fox News, uh, ABC Television? Those are the media organizations you're talking about, well, right? The media, the media would be uh, disbanded. Disbanded? Their property would be, yes, would be confiscated. Confiscated by the government. Yes, we will Al's also, government. We 
will also confiscate all the proper receipts by the credit card companies. Fascinating. Al, I want to ask you to hang on if you can. I want to hear more about your vision. If you've got a question, Al, would you mind taking questions? From, from our audience. All right, great. I want to know more about Al's vision. He wants to seize the media, uh, take it down, shut it down, give it to the people or something. We'll let him explain further here. 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. Times are different than they were when Geico started saving people money over 75 years ago. Everybody takes photos of their food nowadays. You can bet none of us kids would snap pictures of mom's tuna casserole surprise. To this day, we don't know what the surprise was, nor do we want to. We didn't always have tasty food, but we always had great car insurance with GEICO. GEICO, saving people money on car insurance for over 75 years. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the Fully Informed Jury Association at FIJA.org. Alex Jones here. For the last two years, I've been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to design a nutraceutical formulation that has truly life-changing health benefits. So many other formulations out there contain toxic ingredients, synthetic additives, and even GMOs. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm.
This is Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, it's Ian. And Ademo. Ademo Freeman is here from copblock.org. Be sure you check out copblock when you get a chance. There's always some horrifying news stories for you to read there about police misbehavior and how they're almost completely unaccountable. And how you, there's positive stuff like how you can help hold the police accountable. There's good information about that over at copblock.org as well. Plus local groups that you can get involved with all around the world. Yeah, and resources and a bunch of other goodies. So join us online over at freetalklive.com as well, where if you enjoy what we're doing here on Free Talk Live, you can support the show directly by becoming an amplifier. Go to amp.freetalklive.com. Amp stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. And the idea is it's five bucks a month that you can use any major credit card through PayPal or use Visa or MasterCard right on our website. You send it in to us. It's an automatic thing that's you know taken out of your account. You don't have to think about it once you get signed up. And for us, it makes a big difference because that five bucks added in with other people's five bucks totals up and allows us to buy some advertising to radio stations to get Free Talk Live on the air on more stations to bring more internet listeners on board with the program as well and expose people to the ideas of freedom here on Free Talk Live. So it makes a big difference for us when you do that. And you can also get perks like access to the AMP only call in lines or the AMP only Facebook group and more. Go get all the details at amp.freetalklive.com and get signed up. Uh, it's a big, big deal for us when you do that. So thank you. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Uh, we got Al back on the line here in Bangor. And Al, I got to say, uh, apparently you were right. You were telling the truth earlier about the, what was it called? It, it was SETI. He said it was S-U-T-T-E-E, but uh, there's another spelling for it, S-A-T-I. Uh, but then uh, Wiki, it does refer you, redirect you to this one. And it's and correct. Is- it refers to a funeral ritual within some Asian communities in which recently widowed women would commit suicide by fire, typically on the husband's uh, f- uh, funeral fire, pry. Wow. And so it does then go into say how the British in 1829 outlawed this, though it didn't stop, and et cetera. You know, there's a little civil disobedience going on in that manner, which would be kind of hard to punish the person who, you know, disobeyed the law <laughs> and burned them. Uh, it doesn't, I didn't well, read that far. Well, suicide's illegal in the United States, too. Well, yeah. So uh, what's the how, difference? How do you punish the person? You know, it's Well, like it's, what, it's if they fail. That's when they get arrested. True. So, yeah, I guess. You uh, just tried to kill yourself. Now you're going to jail. Right. Good luck. It's going to make your life better. So, Al, you're back on Free Talk Live. You said you'd be willing to take calls. So if anybody, if Al's one of our newer callers, a newer listener to the show, I think, or at least a newer caller. You've called for like the last few weeks, Al. And I have to say, I find your calls to be fascinating because you are someone who unabashedly is interested in controlling the lives of others. You uh, tonight are advocating a takeover, apparently, and and shutting down mainstream media in the United States. I I want you to just clarify what you had said before, uh, before we went away to the commercial break there. Well, specifically, the question asked what would be done as a matter of policy regarding the media, the media would be disbanded and it would be given to certain uh, local centers that all media would be produced locally instead of it concentrating, being concentrated in the hands of a few individuals. And so that would that be uh, mandated or would that happen spontaneously? Oh, it would certainly have to be mandated. Right. And so the, what you're uh, saying is you would send a group of men with guns around to radio and television stations, you would appropriate their equipment. This is kind of like what they would do in Venezuela, right, with uh, dictatorships and things like that. They'll come in, they'll, they'll nationalize uh, the media in a, in a country and take, take it over, take it out of the private hands. And you're saying it shouldn't stay in the government's hands, but you would want it to be, you'd want like Clear Channel or what, it, I guess they're now called iHeartMedia. You'd want iHeartMedia or Cumulus, some of these big radio companies to be completely taken uh, taken apart. They would no longer exist. Their stations could still exist, but they'd have to be given to local owners. That would be the just thing to do. It would be a form of reparations. Uh, reparations? Reparations to all of us, to all the people. Uh, all races in the U.S. because the media have been used unjustly and what they profited from it has been obtained uh, unfairly. The same would be done to the economic institutions, the credit card companies in particular. Uh, And what would you like to see happen to them? Their assets would be seized (laughs) and they would make a fourfold. The ancient Roman 
uh, law was if you uh, stole something through usury, the charging of excessive interest, you had to pay it back usury. four times. So, Fourfold. So okay. we so, would seize their property. Hold on. So, okay, yeah. you want to seize the credit card companies. Now, look, I'm no big fan of the credit card companies. I, I don't think there are a whole lot of fans of the credit card companies out there. I mean, business owners sort of deal with them because they have to. Uh, it's just one of the costs of doing business. If you want to run a business, you'd you probably should take credit cards and so therefore you got to have some sort of merchant account you got to deal with that nonsense and it can be a hassle to set it up and they're always hitting you with the you know the fees if it's a smaller transaction you're getting a huge chunk taken away by fees like with PayPal for instance you know any transaction there's a 30 cent fee plus 2.9% on all of those so business owners get pretty tired of the credit card companies but yet they still do provide a service that obviously people find valuable enough to put up with the crap but you're saying they would be disbanded, and uh, you can't just hand over a credit card company to a local owner because they're servicing a nationwide, if not international, territory. So how do you handle taking apart a credit card company? What do you do with the? Well, do do they with would that? make by law, uh, prior to going out of business permanently, they would make a fourfold restitution to all the uh, creditors, all the people that owe money. Uh, they would repay the money. The remaining money would be uh, redistributed among the people whose properties have been seized through so bankruptcies, foreclosures, uh, particularly in the agriculture. So you're saying sector. the people who had not paid their credit card bill would be made whole by the credit uh, card companies? You would declare a biblical year of jubilee. Which would cancel all debts. All so debts you're saying people should be encouraged. You're encouraging people to uh, to cr to crank out credit card debt. You're saying that this is good. That people should just go ahead and get some credit cards and rack them up, rack up some charges on there, uh, in the hopes that maybe it'll all be forgiven someday. If no, you get they charged? should burn their. They should destroy their credit cards immediately because I see. it's an unjust, uh, exploitative practice. And most young people now have debts of, say, 20000 anywhere up to $100,000. Why do you have to use violence, though, Al? I mean, why can't you do – I mean, you've, I think that this message isn't a terrible one. Like, hey, kids, don't mess with the credit card companies. You don't you rack up a bunch of debt. Right. I mean, that's not a bad idea. I think that's a terrible thing, and uh, and a lot of people are in a serious amount of it, and it's a problem. It's a real burden on a, on somebody's life. And it's a direct reflection of government involvement in a lot of people's lives, you know. But but why not use persuasion? I mean, why, why do you have to use the law, which is really just – an opinion with a gun uh, or an opinion backed by a gun. So why, why not just use persuasion and, and start putting no, the word the, out there? The law, the law, the essence of law is the principle of rightness. No, it's not. If a law doesn't have the principle of rightness in it, it's no law. So a just law would say you cannot charge 20% or 30% per annum. Yeah, but what you're doing isn't right either, Al. You're going to go and force people at the point of a gun to disband their businesses. Well, it's essentially stolen property, and it's a form of reparations. As I say, it's a new concept of white reparations. Well, He's reclaiming his property. I call it that, <laughs> or it their property. Redistributed well, among all people. In, but the radio the stations, I mean, e even if you wanted to argue that the credit card companies have been engaging in fraud all this time, which I don't think you can make a, a real ca case for that because, you know, people know, I mean, they should at least know the deal when you get into a credit card. Like, hey, you know, this isn't free money, folks. I realize some people think it's free money. and it's, Well, the basics of it, they should, but yeah. they definitely play their games. I mean, I'm well, no, again, I'm well, no fan of the credit card companies, but I mean, when, we come, when it comes to a radio station... Um, yeah, that's not the same thing, right? Like those, a lot of those stations are owned by companies that were started small and then they grew into, uh, you know, larger companies and brought, bought on new stations because they love to do radio. I mean, you're, you're talking about punishing those people. Yes, they would be punished because they, they are parasitical. They exploit the weakness of mankind. How is that? They're running and a radio all, station. Yeah. All religion, all religions on earth prohibit usury. What does that have to do? Radio stations aren't cause aren't costing or they're not charging interest rates and loaning money. What does a radio station have to do with that? They exploit human weakness, the animal nature of man, and instinctive forces by promote, promoting sex constantly. Oh, I see. So now we're back to the whole morality. We've gone full circle, well, right? So they, would you leave the Christian stations alone? Would you leave them alone, to, or are they also immoral? 
No, they would also have to be reformed. The entire society... There is not a single area where Al would not want to get in and just try to mess with people's lives and take their stuff and give them away, give it to somebody else who he believes is more deserving. Al, fascinating stuff, man. I appreciate the call tonight. The toll free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. How'd you like to live in Al's if world? Al ruled the world. Right? <laughs> Toll free number 855 450 free. Take control here on Free Talk Live. Hi, everyone. I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn, and you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, now well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, look for the green box at your favorite store. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, January 4th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.78 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,189 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $271. Antiwar.com reports the exact death toll is unclear, but dozens of people are reported killed as the U.S. escalated its airstrikes against the Islamic State capital of Raqqa and the contested city of Kobani. The U.S. launches daily airstrikes in both places, of course, but reports yesterday are that the number of attacks are the highest since before December 24th, when a Jordanian pilot involved in the air war was shot down and captured. Raqqa is the de facto capital of the Islamic State Caliphate, and indeed, the Islamic State controls materially the entire Raqqa province. In Kobani, the Islamic State is continuing to fight against Kurdish militias, which hold much of the city. The Islamic State reported lost an allied Saudi cleric yesterday in Kobani, though there are conflicting reports as to whether he was killed in an airstrike or in fighting with the Kurdish militias. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. Reuters reports former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee said on Saturday that he was leaving his weekly Fox News show so he can explore a 2016 presidential bid. Huckabee, who vied for the Republican presidential nomination in 2008, announced his decision to leave the show on Facebook, then bid his viewers farewell on his final show Saturday night. Fox News has previously ended contracts with national figures considering presidential campaigns, including former U.S. Senator Rick Santorum of 
North Pennsylvania and former Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich in 2011. Huckabee said on Facebook, The honorable thing to do at this point is to end my tenure here at Fox so I can openly talk with potential donors and supporters and gauge support. The former pastor, who remains popular among conservative evangelical Christian voters, has been in the middle of the Republican pack and preliminary national opinion polls. During the 2008 Republican nominating contest, he briefly enjoyed frontrunner status. He chose not to run in 2012. Huckabee was governor of Arkansas from 1996 to 2007 and is set to release a book titled God, Guns, Grits, and Gravy later this month. Huckabee's popularity with evangelical Christians and conservatives could complicate the plans of likely rivals like Santorum and U.S. Senator Ted Cruz of Texas. Huckabee's announcement could push up the campaign timelines of other possible contenders. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports the United Nations said a total of 12,282 Iraqi civilians were killed and another 23,126 were injured in 2014, the highest incidence of violence in the war-torn country since 2007. The head of the UN political mission in Iraq said the country has been besieged with violence as Islamic State militants continue their offensive against the government. Many of the deaths came in the latter part of the year after the Islamic State's major strike in the country. In December alone, 1,101 Iraqis were killed and 1,868 were wounded. The UN warned that the casualty figures have to be considered as the absolute minimum and expressed hope that peace will come soon, adding, yet again, the Iraqi ordinary citizen continues to suffer from violence and terrorism. 2014 has seen the highest number of casualties since the violence in 2006-2007. This is a very sad state of affairs. In 2013, the United Nations said 7,818 civilians were killed in Iraq. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. It's a landmark day in the March for Equality here in America. Congress passed the Casinos for Fairness Act today, which gives every mistreated group in America the right to open a casino. It worked with Native Americans. It will work for the rest of the country. If our society has kept you down, you will get a casino to pull yourselves back up. Veterans will also have the right to open a casino as a replacement for costlier benefit programs. And I think it'd be nice to have a casino. I mean, I'd rather still be able to walk, but, you know. While the majority of the country is handling the Casino Act as a step forward, many Native Americans are objecting to the law. We are still the most disadvantaged group in America. So all that we ask is that we be allowed to open whorehouses and start legally selling cocaine. The bill raised the question of whether immigrants should be allowed to own casinos. After much debate, the legislature decided that they would not, but they will be able to sell sliced mango on the street without a vendor license. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into the third hour of this live Sunday edition of the program. Plenty of time for you to dial in toll-free and bring up anything you'd like. 855-450-FREE. That is the Pro XPN toll-free line. Actually, uh, you can join us on Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. So feel free to reach out to us in the way that works best for you. Although I have to say, if you've got Skype, it generally sounds better than your phone, so go ahead and make the extra effort to call us on Skype. It'll uh, it'll sound better. If you sound better, we're more likely to keep you on for a, a conversation, although there's no guarantees to how long you get on <laughs> Free Talk Live. It just all depends on how entertaining you are. And I have to say, I find Al in Bangor, Maine, to be a very entertaining caller. Adamo, was that your first encounter with Al, or did he call last week as no, well? No, he didn't call last week, but that that was my first encounter with him. I like him, as post, I, I like him compared to some of the other callers. Like He, is, uh, he doesn't get all... Irrational and berate, you know, berating. Well, he's totally irrational, but well, excuse me. Uh, but you know, he's not, not in his yelling. delivery. You know, yeah, you're right. He's not yelling at you, so you can actually have a conversation with him about how truly crazy 
uh, you know, what kind of a crazy world he would like to inhabit. But for him, it would be a perfect world. For him, you know, taking over all radio stations and credit card companies and then somehow returning them yeah, to the Al, people. Al is king in his world. It's a fascinating uh, study, you know, and I, and I don't, people in those positions generally don't want to admit that what they're really asking for is for the government to use violence on their behalf. Right, say what you mean. Yeah, that's what they mean, right? Like in order to... Uh, to disband a radio company, yeah. you would have to have men with guns who would be willing to come into the radio station to hold everyone at gunpoint and demand that they leave the building. Or, or he's whatever. very naive to think that like Fox is just going to walk out of their studio well, like, some after being nicely asked. Some of some of them will, right? Like you know, people are mostly obedient. So uh, if the government were to send along a notice to a radio station saying you've been nationalized. You've got until the end of the week to clear out of your offices. Leave all the equipment. We'll take that. Uh, but you'll need to take your uh, your kids' pictures off your desk and get yeah, the hell out. Yeah, here's the new rules. Or right. they'd probably send them saying, like, hey, you're now getting paid more or less. I don't know. Wouldn't they just, you know, like, would they fire them all and put in their own minions? Question. Or would they just say, hey, here's your new salary. Here's your new guidelines. These and if you don't questions. like it, bounce. You, know? uh, you should have asked Al. Yeah, and and see, that, that's what we should ask, Al, because then Al, that's probably what he would think in his mind is going to happen. But what about the people that don't go along? What happens to them? That's the big question. And, uh, and so, the, the, but there are plenty of people who are like Al, who have a vision for society. And when they, you know, in growing, growing up in government run schools, they will frequently give the students assignments that basically say things like, if you were president, what laws would you pass? <laughs> Which sort of gives kids the idea that, hey, this is what the way things work, folks. You know, you get in the seats of power and then you can use the violence of the state to do whatever it is that you want to do. You right. can you project your view on the world. Mold society in the way that you think is best and mold it with a gun. You know, have a man with a gun stand there and demand people do things that you think are important. And of course, I asked Al, well, why not just use persuasion? And, you know, that's just not good enough, right? Because not everyone will be persuaded. You've got to the use The response violence. isn't fast enough for them. You know, he wants he wants the control of the media today, not not letting the market handle it and, you know, maybe make some mistakes from time to time. Well, that's not good enough, Ademo, because um, obviously the, what the market wants is sex and drugs and rock and roll. And Al doesn't want to have anything to do with those things. And he certainly doesn't want those things in the media. Now, if you're a religious, like ultra religious, uh, conservative right winger or something like that, and you don't want your kids to have access to guns and sexy things or whatever, uh, then there are ways to preclude them from seeing that information. You could just keep them in your house uh, all the time, make sure they don't have any access to any kind of outside media. Right. And there are actually satellite media systems that you can purchase from religious broadcasting groups that are locked provide you a censored package correct that oh, nice. are only religious channels that come down through free to air satellite and so you know if you raise your kids around that system they'll never know any other channels exist so long as you don't let them have friends outside right. of the crazy or you can get like real wacky and like maybe explain these things to them talk to them about it so it's not like uh oh there's the there's a penis today or right. there's a vagina and it's like <laughs> Let's have a baby because we never had this conversation. Well, I know we're 13. There's an argument there, Ademo, that the reason why America is so sex-obsessed, as Al was suggesting earlier, is simply because they're prohibited from it. Is because there's so much uh, repression in the United States that maybe there wouldn't be as much sexual deviancy if people weren't told that sex is bad. You know, if sex was—if— was, uh, if, if Young people were taught that sex is a healthy part of being an adult, uh, and it's a it's a fun thing to do that is you know can be safe if done in a certain way. Right. Uh, that uh, that it's not bad, that it's not evil, that you know you shouldn't feel naughty or that you shouldn't feel guilty about engaging in this. Then maybe there would be less freakiness i guess yeah if you know what i mean like maybe less um or it would be less awkward the freakiness yeah, right and maybe. so like if there was an open communication you know i found that as i've you know i'm 32 years old now and my you know sexual relationships with people are much more advanced i guess and, and i would say that's primarily due to communication i mean it's common that folks with you know similar mindsets like ourselves uh value communications and have some mm -hmm. what would consider more awkward conversations than you know, this traditional dinner table topic. And I think these things come to help uh, n not only further a relationship, but uh, make it stronger. So you, 
not only are you trying to look for a partner for whatever reasons, but sexual, uh, uh, you know, uh, compatibility is is important. A certain level to some than others, and so like some people might like to do that a lot or a little. This or that, and da 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 da. Communication is how you figure that out. I'm not saying kinks would go away entirely. Right. Obviously, you know, kinks are going to be around forever. But maybe they, maybe people would be more vanilla if there were there weren't sexual repression going on in this society. I don't know. I, I think it's that, a human nature to, you know, you're told not to to and, rebel against, and then it, you yeah. do that, right? Especially it makes in it more certain, fascinating. Exactly, especially in the first certain, you know, like I had that more so, you know, my. Early teens to you know mid twenties, like uh, as Why? far as like, excuse me. Why? Why'd you have that? Well, the curiosity. So like when I'm told mm-hmm. no, then like especially from my other experiences, especially with how parents raise children these days, you know, I was what I would consider average standard, whatever. You know, there's a God, there's a Santa Claus, there's these things, and then you find out that these are not true and mm-hmm. social. And so then when you hear about like sex or not doing this or that, then the, your inclination is to be curious about it, go seek it out, and because you know all the but at the same time, yes, that's the inclination. But at the same time, you'll be poisoned by it, right? Because you'll you'll also be telling yourself while you're seeking it because you desire it. As a, you know, as a human being, there's most humans have that uh, that drive. Although there there are asexuals and obviously different levels of of that. But uh, you'll be seeking it while at the same time telling yourself how bad it is, right? Like, you know, I'm not saying that that you and I might do this today, but this is definitely true for a lot of people. Like Mark who was raised in a family that sent him to a, a religious school where he was indoctrinated with all kinds of stuff that he still thinks about. You know, like the stuff they taught him back then, even though he doesn't actually believe in it consciously, right. it's still in the back of his mind, and it's still like you know all these ideas that he has actively rejected. They keep coming up and bothering. You know, it's a real bother, right? So like... You know, the oppression results in not only the seeking of that, but also at the same time, the feeling of guilt. The uh, And that's, the I think, the most negative part about it, that on one hand, the person would be enjoying their sexual encounter. But on the other hand, they would then, you know, maybe during the encounter or after the encounter, feeling guilty about it. I think that's really unhealthy. Sure. Yeah, I was going to say, and that could lead to some other unhealthy characteristics or, you know, uh, actions, you know, like if, if there was a broader more open conversation on the subject and like while people are feeling out these desires and have the ability to conversate with somebody they trust about it you know a parent or a loved one of some sort relative friend um you know yeah maybe it wouldn't get to be you know any of those you know guilt and stress is just unhealthy you know but there's also worse than that right if they if they uh if you know get really crazy into their thought patterns and since they're not sharing it with anybody it just like progresses to more of like a violent bad behavior on the extreme scale but anywho share your thoughts with us here toll free at 855 450 free let's go to skype james is on the line in arizona james go ahead go ahead can i get a hug what's that can i get a hug hug from a thug named Odemo? or how about your roommate you want a hug can I get a thug, your oh, roommate? A thug. Yeah, that's quoting, misquoting you, but I want to have an open conversation about something your roommate, some garbage man podcast had with Ian. Okay, we can do that here in a moment. Stand by, a James. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. We'll come back with more Free Talk Live. You may bring up anything that's on your mind, whether it's sexuality, Al's world, or whatever you want to discuss. It's Free Talk Live. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is is what the Free State Project is all about, but it's an an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community and it's it's only getting bigger that's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent what the free state project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is it's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas there's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty there's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it but here in new hampshire people are doing it 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. 
gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Freedomsphoenix.com constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy, health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative. Freedomsphoenix.com. Constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways. With liberty and property under constant attack, FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda, and it encourages the participation of its readers. Go to FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's Freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com. The revolution between the ears has already happened. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free here, the live Sunday edition of the program, 855-450-FREE. Whether you want to talk about sexual repression, the arrest of an artist in Japan for vagina sculptures. She made a kayak that looks like her vagina and there's a 3d printable file that you could could have downloaded and and then printed your own version of this kayak but that was what got her arrested and charged with uh, distributing obscene data we can take your calls on that or anything you want to discuss here 855 450 free as we continue uh you can also join us online over at freetalklive.com please enjoy the features there and something else you can enjoy is a pound of some of the best coffee out there from buzzbox for free. You just have to pay the shipping cost. The coffee itself has no cost. You go to coffee.freetalklive.com to get your pound for free. There's uh, It's shade-grown, 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica. This is great coffee, and it's competitively priced with other high-end coffees. But at BuzzBox, they're doing something special that you're not going to find at other coffee producers. Teamed up with Free Talk Live and Kiva.org to help turn the coffee profits into microloans, meaning that we can help change people's lives for the better through you just drinking some great coffee. And the way it works is you go to coffee.freetalklive.com, you get signed up, and once ten uh, or a total of 10 Free Talk Live listeners, so for every 10 listeners uh, that signs up, we can fund one new microloan every single month. 
to folks in difficult parts of the world in which to live and make a living. So go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Get your first pound free. You'll get on the auto ship program. You can cancel your subscription at any time. You just pay the shipping cost. They'll send you a pound of coffee. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. We've got James. He's back on with us here uh, calling from Arizona. You had some question or a question for a demo. Adamo Freeman is here with us from copblock.org, and it's widely known, I guess, by our listeners, Adamo, that you and uh, Chris Cantwell are roommates. Yeah, I guess uh, you've, you've uh... talked about that on the air before. So, uh, James, you had some sort of question? Yeah, speaking of hypocrisy and you all's uh, believing in the non aggression principle and being against violence, Adamo, I should like to ma- mention that you may like Minister Daryl. Daryl Daryl W P U Perry once did when I asked him a question about public nudity that he was uh, obvious uh, uh, to no surprise in your audience advocating for the right to be publicly nude, and so I asked you uh, and you did just like he did when I asked you a question about your roommate and you specifically you asked you answered the question by with a question why should I care so I should like to has the get question an even been asked yet I'm I sorry didn't get a question I should yet. like to repose it because I'm I don't think a demo uh, you don't look like a dope smoker so I think you still have most of your cognitive abilities even though you like in God and Santa Claus as being <laughs> one and the same thing that's deeply offensive just like question time <laughs> James question yeah, let's, let's get, get to, the get to it uh-huh. yeah well I know that your roommate literally called in the day after to celebrate and advocate and defended the murder of two cops. He literally, uh, being the peace lover that his parents don't even want him at the Christmas dinner table because they know the thug that he is as a human being. Uh, I should like to know, again, if I were, if I saw a, dis- a distraught victim of, a, of one of those two people that were, was murdered, drive up to Keene, and I, oh, I saw him the, outside the border. Yeah, me. no, you didn't. You didn't answer the question. You just said, "Why should I care?" The question hasn't but been asked like yet. If you what? Remember, he called in last week. Well, what was the oh, question? I don't. I, I, yeah. Not everyone listening. Was listening I was. I know. Like, you were there when I asked it, Ian, and I know you've already forgot. You smoked too much dope. In your life. <laughs> I didn't think the, demo did. the question is: is if, uh, if, if somebody, if one no, of the these people, the question is: the demo is, uh, if I may, the question is: if I saw a distraught, uh, grieving uh, victim, family member of one of those two cops, unload a Glock. Into Chris Cantwell and your your skull sitting in a beat up Ford, and I was a member of the KPD. Uh, since you guys you live with an advocate of such an action that declared war on the cops and says that they all deserve the same fate so long as they suit up in uniform and make money off the taxpayers. Again, I play for the other team at Demo. Uh, why should I What's care? What's the other team? The KPD. Oh, okay. why should I care then? Why should you have? Why should anybody care? So the I question is I why. Could... Just to clarify, the question is why should you care if a demo and, and Chris, are Chris sh- murdered. got well, shot to by clarify, somebody? To really clarify, Ian, since you don't care that Chris Cantwell advocates for violence and murder on your show, well, when actually, he's sitting yes, next I do. You, I've called him out no, about don't. that. Yeah, I have. No, I've, you I've, haven't. Yeah, I've not at all. Against that. Yeah, in fact, I... he'll be in on a Wednesday, won't he? Yeah, and you can no, call you him won't. and talk to him then. You would defend. All right, bye now. So, no, I don't defend violence. And, in fact, if you uh, – and this is something you and I probably disagree on, Ademo, is that uh, you're kind of, at least as I understand it, more on the side of the idea of defending physically against police if you know if they are trying to arrest you. Well, I believe like – I don't I, – I take police out of it. I believe, like, in all no, – no matter the clothing, like, if you feel the need to defend yourself – then you have that right, you know. And I agree. I think you do have the right, but I don't think it's a good thing to exercise when it comes to the police coming after you because they're likely going to end, you know, extern- extinguish your life at that point. Sure. So I, I mean, in any given you'll be situation, made to look like a crazy person, ha- right? In any given situation, you have to assess risk versus reward, and everybody has a different line by that. Like these conversations, you know, as important as they are, are commonly, you know, like there, there's not a one size fits all. There's not a one solution. I mean, if you're talking about me being arrested for a jaywalking ticket, is it a good idea to physically get into a fist fight or or more with that officer over that incident? Terrible idea. Most likely, it's a terrible idea. Ninety nine percent of the time, I would come to the conclusion that it's not a no, good wait. idea. Why don't you answer his question, Adamo? Uh, should why would he, he care? care? Should, why should he care? Well, I don't know how I can even answer that question. Like he wants me. Why should he care that I was murdered if he was a cop? Well. By if he's a cop, a KPD cop, then he's sworn an oath to like protect the community and do these things. And so, without bias, right? Without like judgment, you know, to be a police officer, protect oh, the I thought he community. was just asking about his own self. If, if he was saying that if he was if cop. he was KPD, I see. 
And so I don't know why, because he probably, that's what he would want to, to have done. Like, you know, maybe he doesn't care, but he should still care about his job. Maybe he doesn't care that it's actually me that yeah, died. Yeah, you're no, under no obligation to right. care about Maybe he doesn't give me 100% of the investigation time, you know, or his effort in that investigation. I don't know. Let's go to Nick. But, He's in Charleston, South Carolina. Nick, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, I, I wanted to run by the, the same sexual repression scenario when it comes to the 12 step groups and their various uh, focuses on alcohol, drugs, sex, food. Um, okay. I'd like to get your opinion on uh, the freedom aspect of that. Are, are these, uh, you know, they seem to, you know, when, the, when you're initiated into these groups, you're, you're, you're like in a labyrinth of um, guilt trips and um, uh, sort of. Uh, uh, the psych, uh, psycho babble, if you will, <laughs> uh, you know, and it's really hard to get out of them. And hmm. I was just wondering your opinion about whether that is a freedom issue or is it a uh, health issue? What is it? I don't know if I understand your question. And Damo, were you able to really? I was that? in the same. Can you can yeah. you rephrase, Nick? Uh, our our twelve step groups. Uh, Aligned with a freedom-oriented individual, or are they opposed to it, in your opinion? Well, I don't have any personal experience in one of these. A demo you've ever been in I one haven't. of these things? I um, haven't. I would say no. From my rudimentary understanding of the 12-step program— Voluntary, right? Well, it's voluntary unless you're being forced into it by a court, so it's not always voluntary. But from what I understand, you have to— give up power over your own life you have to and i'll see if i can pull up the 12 steps here in a moment we'll go over it a little bit deeper if you want to hang for that conversation nick because i'm guessing you've been to them but i'd like to know more about your story here in a moment uh 855 453 if you want to comment on nick's question you may answer that as well are the 12 step programs oriented towards freedom i don't think they are we'll talk about why here in a moment 855 453 Award-winning Nobel Prize nominee Dr. Joel Wallach will be speaking January 7th at Faith Tabernacle Church, 2025 4th Street, North Minneapolis, and January 8th, Shiloh Temple, 1201 West Broadway Avenue, North Minneapolis. For more information, call 763-291-5052 or 763-221-8432. That's 763-291-5052 or 763-221-8432. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about, but it's, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday edition of the program. You can dial in toll-free here, 855 453 it's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features waiting for you on the site. Again, that's freetalklive.com. With you tonight, you've got me, Ian. And a demo. And we're going to continue with your calls and thoughts here. Plus, you can join us online at freetalklive.com. There's a way to support this show, and it's a very easy way to do it. You go to shop.freetalklive.com and you buy whatever it is you need to buy there. You go through the links that you'll find to Amazon and then order whatever it is you're looking for. Maybe it's something you need and maybe it's something you want. Either way, Free Talk Live gets a cut when you start your shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Again, that's shop.freetalklive.com. Uh, as we continue here with your calls and thoughts, we've got Nick. He's listening in Charleston, South Carolina. Now, Nick, you had asked the question about the the 12-step program, which, of course, has become very popular around the world to help people break addictions. And, you know, if something works for people, I it's hard to really knock it. I mean, if, if people have had experiences that have been positive with the 12-step program, good for them. And, you know, if that's what if that's what helps you get out of alcohol addiction, then, you know, God has blessed you for it. But your question was specific. It was something defective, and correct me if I'm wrong. Do we think that this is compatible with a uh, pro-freedom viewpoint? Correct. It, it, especially given the fact that the only way it seems to leave the groups is by uh, using whatever thing they're trying to get you not to do again. <laughs> <laughs> so the only way to get out is to break the... Uh... Or to go back to relapse. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to know what your yeah. experience has been, Nick. Before we go into the answer to the question, have you been to these groups before, or is this just something you know from people you've you've known who've been involved? Uh, both, okay. both. And uh, there just there literally seems to be no way to escape them unless you. I mean, that's they deliberately design it to where the only way to escape them is to go back to what you were doing. Before there's no honest way of escaping. How do how do they like keep tabs on you? I mean, if you just don't go to the meeting, I mean, I know that usually it's like a buddy system, right? Like where your buddy will call yeah. you to see if you've relapsed or whatever. But I mean, it right. wouldn't be that hard to change your cell phone number and then just not go to the meetings again, right? No, I guess it wouldn't be. But I mean, is, is this paranoid or? Well, I wouldn't say it's. Paranoid? No, I mean, you know, there's a the system exists for a reason, and that's because it has worked for some people, and some people swear by it. 
And the whole idea of having a buddy, that makes sense, right? You know, you have somebody who will help keep you accountable because that's the idea behind the buddy is that like, you know, if, if you're only checking on yourself, then you may not be as inclined uh, to yeah, hold yourself to the right. You might not hold yourself to the highest level of standards. You're like, yeah, I I'll have, have one. Have drink. one yeah. Right, yeah. Um, but, you know, if there's somebody there who's kind of checking you, then that makes sense. But to answer your question earlier, is this aligned with freedom? We were just looking during the break at the 12 steps. Uh, Damo, you and I, I think, both pulled up 12step.org. Yep. And they have uh, steps one through three. Step one says, we admitted we were powerless over our addiction, that our lives had become unmanageable. Step two, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. And step three, made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood God. And I find these to be disempowering statements. I think that anything that takes away power from you as an individual is something that works against your freedom. So I will go ahead and say that I think that this is not compatible. This particular belief system, this 12-step program is not compatible with freedom. What's yeah, your assessment? Well, I would agree with that as well. Like, like not for me. You know, I would much rather say I have a I have I have the power over my decisions and I have the willpower right. to correct these things. You started it. You should be able you to stop it. You should be able it. to stop it. Exactly. Um but yet, you know, I would say that this is more voluntary than, you know, like the government will come after you or like religions have checked up on you for the financial benefit or, you know, to, to keep the the fallacy al- alive uh, to whatever degree. And so I would, you know, like Ian mentioned, you know, changing a cell phone number phone and number. just Ooh, not, we just lost him. not attending call. meetings would seem to be uh, the way to go about, you know, relieving yourself from this. And it's not yeah. like men with guns would come track you down no. and bring you back. And I don't see unless the, you've been ordered to attend by a court. Well, then those men with guns are, right. are doing this. But, um, you know, I, I guess that would be an argument to make if, if you were court ordered to do this stuff. Maybe you could say, well, like, I don't agree with this and give you something else. But or I guess you got to tough it out for a, a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. But, I don't know if there are alternative options. That, that'd be an interesting question. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Into. I've I've uh, not had to visit such facility. <laughs> Let's go to Chris Cantwell. He's on the line uh, with us here. Chris, you're on Free Talk Live. You ever been to one of these 12 step programs? Yeah, I, uh, that's what I was actually calling in about because I have uh, futzed around with these people uh, quite a bit, and they I I have not found them to be particularly helpful or empowering, certainly. And and if you look at the the data on them, then they are not the most uh, effective things. What is the uh, most effective? Just you know, cold turkey or. Or what? Uh, somebody ultimately makes a decision to straighten themselves out, and I mean, I you know, I'm I'm frankly not entirely there myself, right? I mean, I go back and forth with these bouts with drinking binges and stuff like that. So I am no I am no expert on how exactly to quit drinking. I can tell you quite a bit about how not to quit drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm pretty well versed in that one, and certainly I was uh, I was sort of compelled into the AANA thing from from like my early teens. Uh, got jammed up with the you know the legal system and stuff like that, and they've been they uh, compelled me into these things. You know, rehab program, and then the paid rehab is like, well, you've got to go to NA and AA meetings, and if you don't, then we're going to tell your probation officer you're mm-hmm. going to go to jail. Um, so the while Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, Narcotics Anonymous, these things don't have any you know official affiliation with them. You know, they do have a lot of people who are compelled to be in there. I believe that that creates a really toxic environment when you have yeah. people who don't want to be who who have no intention of sobering up. You, right, you've mixed the people who want to sober up and are there because of their own uh, volition with the people who are just there because a you know judge ordered them to go and they resent it. Yeah, exactly. And the other thing is, if you look into the history of AA, uh, you know, it starts from AA and then they created Narcotics Anonymous as a spinoff of it, which I find kind of funny because if you look into the history of it, the guy who actually created it thought it would be a really great idea to give alcoholics like LSD uh, to treat their alcoholism. Um, Hell yeah. Help for a while, yeah. Sign me up. Well, I we've we've sort of talked before about like like mushrooms and stuff like that. That there's you know some evidence that this could be uh, used for you know cre- uh, curing anything from alcohol to depression to all PTSD, to all yeah, stuff. strong yeah. evidence. Yeah, so I mean, you know, there's they, they, maybe if they had stuck with that track, they'd be a lot better off. Yeah. But it sounds to me like they uh, they went all mainstream, and like everything else that goes mainstream, it went down the toilet. <laughs> Good call tonight, Chris Cantwell. Thanks for making it. Appreciate hearing from you. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Rachel is in Virginia. You're on Free Talk Live. Rachel. Hi. 
Hey, you're on the air. Oh, how are you? Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Uh, just, um, I just wanted to say a few things about the 12-step programs. I'm not in one mm-hmm. um, or needing one, possibly. But, you know, as far as bringing up whether it infringes on anybody's freedom or, you know, if it's a Big Brother deal, I just think that that's kind of irresponsible because these programs help a, a lot of people, and it is generally voluntarily voluntary, you know, to go into these programs. And well, right you- from that aspect, before you go on, from that aspect, if you've entered voluntarily, then obviously it's not infringing on your freedom. I don't think I was saying that it was infringing. It just doesn't sound like its tenets are freedom oriented. In that. The number one rule is that you know you admit that you're not in power over yourself, and to me, that's a to, to disempower an individual from their own lives and from controlling their own actions and body uh, is a, not a freedom-oriented thing to do. I don't, yeah. think that, I don't think that that's their objective, though. I mean, I think that you know you can be you can be in power of your own self and soul. You still, you know understand that you are not the biggest thing out there and that you don't have a oh, problem. No, step three really. says give hey, so, yeah hang on hang on, hang on hang on hang on we'll, we'll bring it back we can continue the conversation here i want to make sure you have a time to get your thoughts out and we'll do that here in moments on free talk live you take control shiny badges on your jacket shiny badges <laughs> This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. John Woolery here. You know, I've talked before about Australian Dream, the effective arthritis pain relief cream that doesn't burn, isn't greasy, and has no odor. Now there's new Australian Dream back pain cream with all those great benefits. But this penetrating formula can help relieve your simple back pain. And it's backed by an empty jar guarantee. If you're not satisfied, you can send back the empty jar for a full refund. But I don't think you will, because Australian Dream really works. Don't let back pain ruin your day. Get Australian Dream back pain cream at Walgreens. Alex Jones here. For the last two years, I've been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to design a nutraceutical formulation that has truly life-changing health benefits. So many other formulations out there contain toxic ingredients, synthetic additives, and even GMOs. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Are you about to meet the media? If you're about to be interviewed, do their homework for them. Know this about the person who will interview you. He or she is busy, so expect minimal, if any, preparation. He or she doesn't know as much about your topic as you do. He or she isn't as concerned as you are about getting your message out, so you need to take responsibility. Provide a biography and fact sheet, photographs, or other materials that tell your story story. Reporters won't be put off if you supply frequently asked questions. Remember, Public Speaking 101, at the end of the speech, what's the one thing you want them to remember? You can download the document I supply to reporters who interview me and squirm through a video that demonstrates how not to conduct your media interview at www.survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, 
Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and there's plenty of time for your call. If you dial now, toll free to 855-453. That's 855-450-450. 3733. You can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features there waiting for you. With you tonight, you've got me, Ian. And Adamo. Don't forget to check out more from Adamo over at copblock.org. Although you don't post that often these days. I don't post that much. I mean, I sometimes jump into the Facebook group and stuff like that, but that recently got me a ban. And (laughs) so I've been there, but. You know, you're still I pop working in behind and out. the scenes. You're still working behind the scenes. And a small scale, but I've got some things in my mind, and who knows what happens here in the next couple of months. There There's might some, be some, some interesting irons in the fire. There are Can't a few. Say more than that, though. That's right. Uh, but once you can say more than that, I hope you'll talk about it on. Free yeah, talk we'll be Live. here. You know, I, I, I might be brown next week again, and so I'll drop in once we figure that stuff out too. So join us here on the phones or via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. By the way, the lady that was on the line with us, she dropped off during the break, which is too bad because I really wanted to hear, you know, what she was arguing about with the whole twelve-step thing. It sounded like she was trying to say that the twelve-step program isn't necessarily not freedom oriented and and i don't i don't want to put words in her mouth but again she dropped off the line um we're looking at the 12 steps here and and it's like i recalled because we've talked about them previously in the past on free talk live and that is the main three the first three steps are that you basically give up control over yourself and give control up to uh whatever version of god uh that you believe in. you're powerless against the addiction and you need an outside Something to help you overcome it. Right. To right? me, that's you know that's very disempowering, and I don't like anything that disempowers the individual from uh, over uh, over their own life. I think that's a dangerous thing and not a very freedom oriented thing. Yes, you did volunteer to sign up for the twelve step program, and you know if you like what they do and you want to be a part of it, then by all means go for it and good luck. Right. Uh, but for people that value independence. For people that value liberty, it doesn't seem like the right place to be for someone like that. And, and you know, I'm saying that as somebody who believes in God. It's just that my God is not a, the kind of God who's separate from me. You know, like I'm a panentheist, so I think that everything's God, and that would include me. And so, you know, to say I'm not in power over my own life, just I wouldn't be able to do something like that. That's like a ridiculous concept. To yeah, me. to me, this is one of the things, like, there might be a lot of— uh good features of this program, you know, buddying up, having support, communication with others who are experiencing the same highs, lows, overall experience. You know, those are good things to take away from this. I believe that without, you know, losing your, you know, like one of the greatest things, your individual, you know, self-being and willpower and, you know, the freedom to own oneself, uh, you can still overcome addiction. You know, I don't think that like they make these sound like all 12 of these are a necessity. Well, I think like four five and seven are pretty good. And mm-hmm. like one, two and three can, you know, get shoved over here. And so, you know, I, I, I believe the caller was more or less confused on our statements uh, stating that we were like, I, I believe that it's not in line with Liberty, you know, in a philosophical sense, like it's, it's not that way. And it's like the things you mentioned hanging these things over, but I'm not saying that the program, you know, it's voluntary to the most point for the reasons we highlighted in the last segment. Right. And I think that the 
the court needs to stop forcing people to go to the 12-step program. It'll probably help, as Chris Campbell was pointing pointing out, it'll probably help it be more effective when half the classroom isn't a bunch of people that are forced at the threat of violence by the court to be sitting there. Exactly. You know, because if you're actually, if you're sitting next to someone who wants to be there, that's going to bring more value to you than if you're sitting next to somebody who resents the fact that they're there oh, yeah, and they it's wish clearly they could obvious. be at home drinking. You get buddied up with a guy who's just there because... I have to do this for yeah. the court. So How's I that going to help you? Yeah, it ain't going to help you. It ain't going to help them. It ain't going to help the, the class at all. So if you want to share your thoughts here, you're welcome to do that. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. To go back briefly to the story we were discussing previously, which is about uh, the Maryland case, where multiple gun owners had been shaken down by the police in Maryland just driving through the state. Uh, but actually, both the examples they've given so far are from Florida, and these guys believe that they had their license plate scanned. Some sort of database check was run to find they, oh, they've got themselves a gun permit from Florida, and since Maryland doesn't recognize that, they uh, they can, you know, even though you've got a gun permit from Florida, you can't have the gun with you in Maryland, and so they're pulling people over and searching their cars. Now, the MTDA police deny that it targets out-of-state gun owners, of course, and noted the review of one of the men's traffic stop concluded the officers did nothing wrong. Uh, their spokes bureaucrat said this, quote, the police conducted a review of the traffic stop and concluded that the stop and subsequent search of the vehicle were justified. The investigation did not reveal any violations of law or agency policy. Now, I don't think they answered the question as to how they found out that the gentleman in the cars had a gun permit in the first place. Right, that's the big question. And like, did they did they mention it? Like, did they say, "Oh, you're doing a little over the speed limit"? Or uh, well, they did give one guy a warning for speeding. Okay, so he didn't even get a ticket for speeding. They were clearly were looking for the gun, right? So the officer, by the way, same officer stopped both of these unrelated men from oh, Florida. Oh wow! Yep, that officer is assigned to the I-95 corridor where they they claim there is a large volume of out-of-state travelers. Boston-based criminal defense lawyer Paul Kramer says these type of stops and searches happen far too often in Maryland and are a waste of taxpayer money. Mr. Kramer represented a Pennsylvania security officer who was pulled over in the state for speeding. The Maryland officer asked the client whether he had a gun in the car, and once the man acknowledged he did, the officer arrested him for having the gun and the cartridge in the same locked container, not separated as per Maryland law. Crazy. Here's a hint. Just a suggestion for those of you dealing with the police, you don't have to answer their questions. So Ever. when the cops ask you, is there anything in the vehicle I should know about? You are under no obligation whatsoever to give them any kind of answer, responsive or non-responsive to that. In fact, you can just look at them and stare if you'd like. If you're not sure what to say back to them, you don't have to say anything back to them. You can just hand them their inform hand them the information they're demanding, your license and registration or information, uh, your insurance info, and then just sit there. And then adding a camera, you know, even if uh, yeah. even if faking it. Sometimes I've had like a dead battery or something, and I faked that I'm filming. Could also help you in that scenario because a lot of folks, I think, answer the the question because they believe that by giving the answer, it won't be a big deal, right? Oh yeah, I won't get in any trouble for this. But the 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 exact opposite is true. In fact, if you say nothing and you have the video, then like you know, and you, let's say they arrest you, you know, they have to then prove that these things are yours or not yours, and it's a lot more difficult case. Not to say that they won't or may not be able to, but. It's a lot more it's difficult than lot having lot an officer yeah. say, well, he told me it was here in the glove box. And if you pull out a video camera, that's an instant signal to the officer that this person knows their rights. You know, this person it may not be someone we want to mess with today. And that it's on video and that, like, you know, it's another, you know, if videos go missing, then, like, there's other questions to bring up. And it's just another avenue that you might be able to get lucky with in court in the future. I say might because it's not always the case. I've had cops delete footage, clearly proved it. And nothing's happened to them. Let's go to Mike. He's in North Carolina. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Mike. Hi, how are you doing? Good, Mike. Go ahead with your thoughts. Well, I, we're, I heard you discussing uh, post-up programs and all that. And I, uh, I've i actually been sober for almost seven years. I used to drink like a fish. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying that Alcoholics Anonymous is the greatest thing in the world, but I, I it is the only proven way. Like if a doctor can't doesn't know what to tell you to do, he'll, he'll suggest that's the only thing that sometimes work um i don't think it's uh you really don't have to relinquish all control to one being uh, it's not a very religious program it, i think it's uh 
you know, I, I all of those, all of the steps and rules are actually suggestions, kind of like Fight Club. There are no rules in hmm. Fight Club. Okay. Oh shit! I'm getting pulled. I oh, pulled you over can't say. Good luck, brother. You can't say that on the radio. I had to dump you there. He was sadly he was getting pulled over. It sounded said, like he just said, "Yeah, OS." Hopefully, I'm pulled record, over. record. Yeah. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we have to. The rule is we got to drop you when you say that. So it's sorry to be so rude there. Uh, and good luck with the pullover. Rachel is back with us here. So technical difficulties dropped her off the line. Rachel, uh, go ahead with your thoughts. We're short on time though. Okay, I'll be quick. Um, all I wanted to say that is that I don't think you have to give up your personal freedom to recognize that you need help. I mean, you're not born knowing everything. You're not born knowing how to walk. You're not born knowing how to fill out a job and application. You know, you're not born knowing how to help somebody if they get sick, da, 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 da. You know, if you need that, if you need that help, and then, and then I don't think that it's, I think it might be more of a freedom to be able to say, you know, I'm letting this go outside of me because I can't deal with this. That's that is actually freeing, I would think. You know, for So you're arguing of- that to relinquish your own control to some sort of thing and some sort of entity outside of you is freeing. I guess that's just a fundamental dis- uh, disagreement we're going to have here tonight. And well, thank you for the call. Can. Rachel, if you want to call talk further, we're on tomorrow, 7 to 10 at night Eastern Time. We can discuss this then. Thank you for the call tonight. Adamo, I imagine you're uh, on my side on that one. I agree. Yeah, yeah. with you. I, I don't think having someone else control you is freedom. Not at all. <laughs> not, not the very founding of the word. That's kind of like slavery, but I guess if you volunteered into it, eh, yeah, well, whatever yeah. floats your boat. See you tomorrow night. Freetalklive.com is... In the meantime, DVD Free Talk Live. The TSA increasing the invasiveness of their pat downs. They're no longer going to use the backsides of their hands. They're going to be touching. Now you. they're going to be grabbing it full That's on. Right, all over. And what is their justification for this? I've heard this, but that's I all the terrorism that's not. been happening. That, uh, why know. do they have to use the front of their hands now? Well, did, the, was there any was there an event? Did they use a certain event where something got through no. that no. they would have felt if they'd used the front of their hands instead no. of the back of their hands? They just no. want to encourage you to go through the new sniffing what is device. Gonna, what's or, yeah, what's going to be their explanation when they need, when they have to use their penis to pat you down? <laughs> <laughs> what is the, what is their justification going to be then? <laughs> my hands aren't sensitive enough to catch everything. <laughs> well, it's not like you can read Braille with that thing, my friend. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah. They, I mean, well, your lips are very sensitive. Oh, you have a lot of nerve endings in your lips. So there. when the hands are no longer good enough. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Gabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel anytime. Coffee.freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone. 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, January 2nd, 2015. Gold is trading at $1,184, silver at $16.02, and Bitcoin is trading around $315.93. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest, most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at expresscoin.com. Your job, your home, your car, your money. All of these provide you with a sense of security. But what about your family security? What have you done to prepare if all of these things were gone? eFoods Direct has the food security you need. For every emergency, eFoods Direct is food security. 
Go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Beat for 50% off their food preparation planning packs. In the news, on Monday, the ACLU and Human Rights Watch demanded that the U.S. Department of Justice appoint a special prosecutor to investigate the CIA's use of torture methods. In a letter to Attorney General Eric Holder, the civil rights groups said the recent Senate Intelligence Committee report on the CIA includes new information that should be properly investigated. The group stated that failure to conduct a comprehensive criminal investigation would contribute to the notion that torture is acceptable. On Wednesday, leaders of the Senate Judiciary Committee announced that they were seeking details from the Obama administration regarding federal law enforcement's use of cell phone surveillance technology. In a bipartisan letter to the Departments of Justice and Homeland Security, Senators Patrick Leahy and Chuck Grassley requested more information about a recent policy change by the FBI regarding how surveillance equipment is used. 16 Iowa farmers and companies have filed suit against Syngenta Ag for losses incurred after China rejected corn shipments containing a genetically modified seed made by the corporation. The lawsuit 